Hello again, folks. How are we doing? Let's get started here. How is everybody this evening? Hey there, Ann. How you doing? How's it going? Alright, let's... Let me check something here real quick. Give me one second. Still trying to make sure audio levels are where they need to be. And of course the... Oh, no, it reset. Okay, okay. It reset. It reset. Okay. We are good. Hey, Kuya, what's up? Your day was alright? Well, good. How is everyone? We're going to... I don't know if you guys remember this picture here. Um, I want to play around with making it look three-dimensional. And I don't really know how to say it other than that, but we're going to try to make it look sort of three-dimensional. Um... I almost want to give it like a like a movement 3D like rotoscope effect. Um, so I took the art and I intentionally made it bigger than what it was in the original thing. Very cool. You know, I was working on some perspective today. Cool, yeah. Like I was working on um, I was working on uh, a couple like buildings and stuff, just kind of playing around, just getting kind of reacquainted with perspective and stuff. Because sometimes it's good. To just draw random things, you know, to help kind of keep you keep you motivated, keep you moving. All right, so I want to show you guys something really cool with this software. So if we if we look at this, you guys see how this is a flat image, right? How I can take this and rotate it, and you see how that's a flat plane, right? Well, this software allows us to do Z index, so we can actually spin this all the way around. You see that? Because it's on a plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the elements and we're going to give it Z-depth and make it look three-dimensional and I'll show you how. I was working on banner today. Oh, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Send me a screenshot. Okay, cool, yeah. Fair life. Hey, thank you for the follow on D-Live. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We're just getting started here. We're kind of discussing what we're getting ready to do here. And I'm going to open this up so everybody can see the original. There we go. Yeah, see, this is the... I'm going to rename this animation. Because we essentially redid this specifically for the animation. Here with the original picture, right? And even though this one looks like it, it's not. The shapes are actually much, much, much bigger. And they're also built in a way that they're going to work for animation. I'm going to show you guys something really cool. So again, you see how this is flat right here, right? Well, what we're going to do is if we look at this... You see this gray box here? That's what's called like the view area. So anything inside that box is basically a, it's what's in the view range, right? So you're gonna see, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do. Still working on the banner, awesome, awesome. You haven't made the jump yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do little stuff like this. Um, little things like that. I do like little fun animations for, um, this isn't, this isn't 13, this is 12, this is, what am I on? 12.5 is what I'm on. Um, I still have 12, me too. Um, but um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this thing out. And I do little things like this. We do little fun animations, things like that. Yeah, and of course we make our own art. I actually draw the art right here. I draw the art in a program called Affinity, Affinity Designer. And then I um, import everything into Moho and then we animate it from there. So, yeah, pretty cool. All right. Yeah. What kind of stuff do you animate? Because <clears throat> I'm doing something a little different tonight. I'm not. I'm not going to animate this in the normal sense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to. I want to almost make it look three dimensional, like the screen rotates. You know what I mean? Oh, it exports. It exports very clean. Like, when you see these little animations, like right here, you're gonna see right there, right? Like, the animations look super, super good. Hey, Kuya. There's a seven. What's up, seven? How you doing, dude? All right. So how are we gonna do this? Let's get this started. So this looks completely flat right now, right? Here we go. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to grab different elements of the picture. We're going to start with the mountains right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag them out. So we're going to rotate this. We're going to rotate this to the side like this. We're going to select you, right? We're on number one. And we're going to select this. Let me see if I've got this right. Is that what I want to do? Oh, because it's got to be these separate images. Ew, it won't grab the whole folder. I'm going to cry. This is the first time I've met another person who uses bones vectors in a place. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like, um, I got into animation just because I wanted to start playing around with, like, um, you know, bringing some life to my art. Because you can see a lot of my art over here on the side. You can see a lot of the, the what I do. I do a lot of vector stuff, obviously. But I'm getting into doing more animation stuff. Little, like, I made this the other day. This little, uh, little cat. I was actually going to have him trigger when Catbot triggers on uh, Mixer, but it won't work. Apparently, uh, Mix It Up can't read when Catbot, um, when it, like, deletes chat. <laughs> so, so we just have him up there on the stream deck. We can sort of bring him up when we want. Let's put him here. Let's reopen this. Let me go check something here real fast. How you doing tonight, Seven? You doing well, buddy? Here, let's check. So this is what it's going to end up looking like. You guys see this? See the depth that's going on here? So... Okay, so we're basically going to leave it like that. Okay, so that's how we're going to do it. Alright, let's go back to that one. Do you stream your stuff as well, Bear? Or are you more... Just watching, or do you stream? You mean so? Let me know. So I installed it. Uh, funny enough, you asked that Kuya in chat. He is using Blender. He is uh, getting pretty. Um, he's getting pretty into it. Uh, let me drop you a follow then, there, buddy. Yeah, got you covered. Um, he's stream. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So, Kuya has been using it. I installed it the other day. But I will tell you, I am terrible at it. So, I've got to, I've got to get more comfortable with Blender. It's something I'm trying to learn. And I'm, I've actually been lurking on Kuya at work. Because when I work, I watch him. And I'm trying to watch some people that are doing Blender stuff. So, if you guys are doing Blender stuff, keep doing it. Because I want to learn it. Okay. Go number one. There we go. There we go. Now we're going to move that out. You see that? See, I started with 12. Or, I'm sorry, 11 was the first time I tried it. What do you think of Blender? Do you like it? Alright, so let's, let's keep trying this. And what we'll do is we're going to drag each one of these out. You do all yours in Photoshop? I appreciate that. So I'm, I'm completely self-taught. Um, everything I do is what I've learned on my own. And um, I'm freelance. And uh, I love doing it. Like, I love, love doing it. And it's something that, you know, I'm actively trying to get better at. Um, and so what I'll intentionally do is, you'll see it a lot here on stream, is we will intentionally take on new ideas and processes, trying to learn different things, you know what I mean? Really just trying to dig deep. Logo you see by my name. Awesome! I haven't used Photoshop in... Shh, been a while. Ever since I started using Affinity, I haven't touched an Adobe product. I haven't touched one in, in a couple years now. I don't even know what they feel like anymore. Really? 
I gotta, I gotta spend some time on it. Like, I really gotta spend some time on it. Because I feel like, I feel like I'm doing myself an injustice not touching it. Because I have friends that are using it and they're telling me the same thing. They're like, you really need to try it out. I guess I just need to break down and do it. Okay. So, we're gonna go... Why are there two sets of this in here? Wait, what? Why are there two sets of the same SD file in here? Well, that ain't gonna work. We're gonna restart that. I don't know why it imported like that. There's only one in the PSD, right? What in the world did I do that for? Yeah, I installed it. Um, I was waiting on, actually, with Blender, I was waiting on it to stop being the nightly build stuff where you were having to re-download, unpack, use, re-download, unpack, use. I was waiting for them to officially release 2.8 before I really started jumping into it. So now that they've released it and it'll get updates and all that stuff, I went ahead and installed it. Um, and now I just need to use it some more. What in the world? Why is this so... Hold on a second. My PSD is screwed up, I think. Let me, um, let me redo this. Delete layer. Save it. Reset view. Let me go here. We're gonna grab all of this. File new from clipboard. Why is it doing that? We're gonna go file. Let's see. Google... Uh, animation, moho, testing. Get rid of that. And we're gonna export this into there. File export, PSD, export, graphics, animation, moho. And we'll go, we'll put in the same thing and we'll just call it scene. Oops. Scene. Test. Okay. There we go. Yeah, but I'm gonna play around with uh, Blender some more this weekend, I think, uh, because I don't really, I'm on, I'm working this weekend, I'm on call, and so I think what I'm gonna do is, since I'm gonna be home, I think I'm just gonna play around with it some. Let's see what this looks like. That's better. I don't know why it was doing that. Okay, so let's take this. And we're going to move it down so it's in the frame. Fantastic. So we're going to drop it right there, I think. Perfect. Okay. So then what I want to do is we have that is one item. Yep. So we're going to do that as one piece. That way it sort of spins. Now what we'll do is... Okay, now we're where we need to be. So let's save it. Grab the tool, grab layer one, and we'll get started. Sorry about that. I don't know why it was doing what it was doing, but we're back on track. Two. We're gonna grab three. Must have removed it. Oh yeah, you did all that in Blender? You drew that in Blender? Or did you actually draw that in Blender? Oh, Moho Drop, sorry, I looked at it real quick. See, so I'm still getting used to it all to the whole program, the, the, the way that it works and everything. Because I was watching, um, this is going to look really cool. You see how it's starting to have that 3D effect already? You see that as we move it? You see this? I'm not sure if that translating well to you guys, but you see that? We're gonna create this three-dimensional effect that's gonna allow us sort of to go through the image like this and just make it look 
cool. Really, really cool. Really cool. And then you can see the layers, the way, the way I'm doing it like this. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, I'm gonna try Blender this weekend. I, I, I have to because I, I'm just hearing too many cool things about it, and it's just one of those things I haven't, I haven't really given it enough time, enough attention, you know. This reminds you of Blender, right here, what I'm doing. Alright, so this is going to look really, really interesting when we get this all done. Because here's what I want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, like, prove a, a concept to myself here. Where I can take this art and animate it in a way that it looks three-dimensional, but it's still 2D, right? So that maybe if I want to take and create... Like, so for in this instance here, I'll probably take the speeder and see if I can't speed it across the screen and have it, like, fade out or something. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to play around with it. This is really a learning stream. I should have probably put learning stream. <laughs> okay, so that's five. Let's take the, um... What is on the back here? Let's take these stars here. Let's go here and let's move them back. Yep, see, there they are. Now they're free-floating, so this is going to give everything... Here, yes, those are script. So what's cool about this, check this out. I'll show you something really cool. They allow you to do um, um, uh, like rounded rectangles and stuff. So you can get more into drawing vector art like you would regular vector art. You see this? So you can do like rounded angles. You can do like this where you can automatically center your center point. You can do match width. You can do auto fade in, fade out on the timelines. Uh, it's called Min Tools. So if you go here, yeah, it has it adds a whole bunch of functionality, and it's really, really freaking easy to install. And you know what's funny is I actually went out, and the whole reason I looked for it was because I I'm, I'm so used to making vector art, right? And I was like, how in the world do I make rounded rectangles? And I couldn't find a way. So because this software did it, I was like, awesome. And it does all kinds of other stuff. Like you can see over here, it does like um, clone shapes, clone offsets, um, insert layers into group, stroke width, match width, uh, set origins, fade in, fade out. You can do custom animations with it and stuff. It's pretty cool. And all you do, you know the um, the folder that you, you create, you set up when you create Moho, it's like the Moho tools folder or whatever. It goes in there. So you just dump it in there, you create the folder dump the data in there and it just points to it and it pulls it up and then if the guy ever updates it you just go download and it's free you download the new update you just overwrite that folder and you just keep going pretty cool and again that all stemmed from the fact that i needed to know how to make a darn rounded rectangle because i was like how because you know in vector art when i draw like when i draw my characters like let's say things like this right with this chair I do a lot of rounded rectangles, and so I'm trying to get to the point to where I can sort of make some of this art within Moho without even needing to use, um, without even needing to use Affinity as much. But I'm, I'm a long way from that because I enjoy the way Affinity works, so let's go here. Exactly. That way you don't have to use the base year. Like, if you want to do a true rounded rectangle, bam. And it does other stuff, too. Like, if you go read about it, it does, like... It does, like... Like, you can click an object, right? It, this is a really useful feature. Let's say I make a rectangle, like, this big. And I make another rectangle. I can select one rectangle, hit match height, and it'll automatically match it to the height of the next one, one next to it and everything. It, I mean, it has some pretty cool tools. The set origin is really useful.
Okay. Yeah, it's really easy to install, too. If you have any questions or something when you go to do it, just let me know. But I, it, it's not that hard to figure out. There we go. I think we're finally starting to get somewhere now because things are starting to separate, which is going to give us that depth. So if we reset the view, what's cool is from the front, everything looks normal, right? But if we go and we ro roll the camera, well, not roll it, but if we tilt it, yeah, you can see how it has a 3D effect, but we're not going to do it like that. We're actually going to do it a little bit differently. Okay, cool. Let's keep doing this. And again, I'm not quite sure what I want, want it to look like in the end, but we're going to figure that out. We are going to figure that out. So city, I think we're going to actually take the clouds out of it. We are. We're going to delete layers. We're going to delete this layer. We're going to delete this layer. I think, yes, we're only going to stick with that one at the front, I think. I like that. Um, so then what we'll do, where is that one? See how that one ended way up in there? We'll bring it up here in the front between, I'd say between those two, like maybe here. Yeah, we'll go right there. Really, was it? It might've been Toon Boom. You know, the crazy part about, here's what I like, and I'm sure you understand this, like, a lot of people, they talk about, like, um, what is that one software everybody talks about? It's called, like, Character Animator or something. It used to be called, like, Crazy Talk, I think. But the thing with that is, while it animates really well, you can't draw in that program. So, it's limited to import and modify only. And that's the thing I like about Moho, is that not only can you animate in the software, you can draw in the software. So what I'm doing is I'm trying, like I said it earlier, is I'm trying to learn how to draw within the software and I'm trying to animate within the software. That way I'm kind of learning both because I don't want to be limited to just animation. Like I want to be able to create in the program. Like I was explaining this the other day, like let's say I draw a character, right? And I get everything imported and I just want to draw like one little detail, like add an extra piece of hair or something. I don't need to go and re-export a whole PSD file for that and name a new file and everything. I can just grab the tool, make it, give it the same color, and bang, out the door. You know, and, and that's what I like about Moho, is that you can do that. Where, with like crazy talk and stuff, you'd have to go and, and re-import the whole PSD, redo all the, nah, nah. No thanks. Okay. City 3. So we need to move this back. There we go. Too far. It went behind the sun. All right. So we'll just bring it forward. And we may have to readjust some of this as we go, which is fine. Bring it a little more forward. You know of a way, you know what I'm, do you know what I'm doing here with the way I'm doing this depth? You know of a way to expand the whole thing in an even manner? Do you know if that's even possible? Like, is there a way to go and take, like, 20 layers and, say, split and do, like, maybe a 10-pixel gap or something? That would be really cool if there was a way to do that. I just don't know if there is. You know what I need to do? Let's do a side-by-side -side view. Yeah, so, okay, you see what I'm doing here is I'm taking each layer and I'm basically creating gap on the Z-depth, right? So if we go over here, I'm essentially taking everything 
and I'm creating that that gap space here on the Z depth you see that um, is there a way to create the Z depth on a layer based file automatically like is there a way to go is there a way to say all right I want to take this file with X amount of layers and just create that depth or is that not a thing I'm not sure Galen what's up buddy thank you for the host how are you good to see you sir thank you thank you firebrand Thank you for the host, buddy. We got a host. Welcome, everybody. Appreciate it, folks. How are you doing, my man? I am good. I am good. We're working on a little bit of... I'm trying to make a... I'm, I'm making a Z-Depth... That image I made the other day. We're going to make a Z-Depth version of that image. And we're going to animate it in a way. I don't. I really don't know what I'm trying to say yet. But I'm going to make almost like a 3D holographic look. In a way. We're going to do like a little movement. Yeah, exactly. And and so I'm sort of spreading out these elements right now, playing with them. Different intervals, yeah. I don't know how I want to do it. And this, this is really just practice, and, and you guys will see a lot of that here. I, I practice a lot on the stream. Good stuff. Thanks, buddy. How are you doing, Galen? Guys, Galen is another creator here on the platform. Definitely a really nice guy. You should follow him over here on Mixer. Right. And that's sort of what I'm playing with right now. Uh, is I'm playing with, like, just how to do this to give it that effect or give it that look. You know what I mean? Right. Issue 2 is officially in print. Nice, Galen. Dude, that is awesome. Two comic books under your belt. You should be, dude. The heck of an achievement. Thank you for the host, buddy. Thank you. We got a new I appreciate that. It's late here in the UK, but I'll drop follow and come back soon. Darren, thank you so much for that follow on DLive. I really appreciate it, buddy. Thank you so much. Right. All the hypes. Yeah. Wait. I see where it says one next to linear. What are you looking at? Am I crazy? Oh, there. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take care, Darren. Thank you so much for that follow, buddy. I appreciate it, sir. So, guys, we're messing around with a little bit of animation. Bear with me. I, I'm playing with creating almost a three-dimensional. You guys can sort of start to see it. You see how in here it's starting to look three-dimensional? You see how as we move this, it's starting to have that almost like, um, I dare say, holographic look? That's kind of what we're playing with here. We're kind of messing around to see what we can do. <laughs> Thanks for the cat, dude. How is everybody today, man? Yeah, that's the interval there, though. I'm trying to change the actual Z-Depth. I need to do some homework on that bear. There's got to be a way to explode the file automatically. There has to be. I'm going to have to look at that. Because ideally, I would like to be able to just explode this without having to do this work. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'll just do some reading on it. Hey, Grim. How are you doing, bud? Yeah, we're doing a little bit of... I wanted to take that picture the other day since so many people seem to like it and I figure let's see if we can't do a little bit of animation on it, you know what I mean? Play around and give it almost this, this parallax look. Yeah, that, that's what I want to try to do. Yep, that's what I want to try to do. Yep. So I'll, I'll give you guys an example for anybody that's just coming in. Um, so the other day I, I did, well, I say the other day, this was a while ago now, but you can see the Z-Depth on this. This was the first time I did it. You can see how the trees, the rocks, the ground, the clouds, and everything have a different Z-Depth, right? 
So what that does is as you animate through the file, watch this, you can actually use that to create trickery. And you can actually bring things in and out of the frame, almost like you would do like a cartoon or an animated cartoon or something like that. And so that's what I'm playing with is that Z-Depth to give it almost a three-dimensional, like a pan-through feeling. And But I want to do it in a way that it almost creates like a hologram. You get what I mean? Sort of like a, um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to almost like an augmented reality. Like a, you look at it because what I think would be really cool is let's say I take this here, right? And we get this so it looks like this, right? I think it'd be really cool to upload that to social media. Because what it is, is as people are strolling through their phone, right? They're going to see it moving. And it's almost going to look like a hologram or something. And I think it would just look really catchy to the eye. And it would definitely make people just kind of go, what the heck is that? You know what I mean? Because it would almost make it feel like they're moving their phone, even though they're not. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to have a really cool look to it. Um, and then, well, once I get this side of it down... Eventually, I'd like to be able to do this same thing, like a holographic sort of three-dimensional feel, but then animate through the scene. You know what I'm saying? Simply move the camera. Right, and we're going to move the camera. We're going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think it could look... Like, imagine scrolling through Instagram or something. You see that on your phone, right? It'd be like... It would definitely catch your eye. You know what I'm saying? And then have my logo in the front, like on all my pictures. And, and it's those kinds of things that get you those follows and get you that traction. And when people see things that make them stop for a second. Because, I mean, how many of us, we scroll through Instagram and stuff, right? We see art, we see different things. But when you see something that really makes your eyes stop, you kind of go, oh, wow, you take notice. You know what I mean? And that that's kind of what I'm going for here. I want to create something that sort of pops off the screen. And you can see how the stars are going to have their own la layer and everything. But watch this. We're going to take these back mountains. So we're going to go here with number 10. And watch this. We're going to move it back. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yep. And 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 I've seen them done in other programs. Like there's a, there's a program called like Star or something I saw somebody use once that kind of emulates this, but not quite. And that's why I'm like, you know what? I want to find a way to do this. I want to find a way to do this because I think it could be really, really cool. But I'd also like to find a way to, like I said, to make it explode out in a in a uh, automatic sense. I've got to figure that out. What is this called? This is called Moho Firebrand. This is a, uh, and I'll show you guys here some of the other stuff here. And I know like Bear hasn't seen this before, but I've, I've been learning Moho. So here's some of the things I've done. Now, this is a really cool animation to kind of showcase what you can do. This is actually a flat 2D face. There's no three dimensional depth there at all. But what I did was I rigged the face in a way that even though it is a flat vector head, the way I rigged the movement of the head, it almost looks three dimensional, right? And so it sort of allows you to create, you know, cartoons or comics or whatever. And so I'm trying to figure out like a style or a way that I would want to animate the things that I want to do. Um, and using the, the art that I make anyways, which is typically a flat design. And then like if we go, um, if we go in here like this little daily one, here's another really good example. This one really showcases, if you look at these little things right here, these are called bones and controllers, right? So this little guy here, again, that is a flat 2D character. But the way that we use the squash, the stretch, and we use the eye movement, if you watch the controller, the controller is controlling the eye movement. So it almost makes it look lifelike, even though it is literally a flat 2D shape. I didn't draw but one scene, a green square with shading and an eyeball. All the bones and everything are controlling the rest of the movement. Thank you. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Like, it allows you to do some really, really cool animation. Um, thing is, is I'm not, you know, like, a master at it. I'm learning. I'm getting better. And then we've done things like this, Firebrand. How you doing, Mr. Seven? You know, we've done little animations like that through using the same technology. And then for Water Bottle, we did. Hi, Water Bottle. You know, things like that. We've been, I've been learning it slowly, little by little. And... So every time that I learn it, it's like this. I basically just get an idea in my head and I'm like, okay, how do I make this a reality? And then I just dive in and I start figuring it out. <laughs> really, what it turned into. I haven't driven myself crazy yet, but I'm getting there.
Okay, so let's take number 10. 9. Eight. Actually, let's go with five is the bridge. Yeah, five is the bridge. So we'll move the bridge forward and we'll leave the speeder right where it is because that's going to be the speeder. We'll take number seven and leave it where it is and we'll take eight back a little bit. So that means that city three needs to go back. And see, this is what I was just talking about when you guys were coming in. I'd really like a way to... to I don't know how to say it other than auto pop. I, I got to figure out if this is an option in Moho. I would like to be able to just auto expand this. Like take a take a PSD file for example, and let's say it has twelve layers, and just say spread uh, with a hundred pixels between each or whatever. So it would auto do this. That's something that I need to look into for self education because then that would make this process just so much easier if I could actually do that. Hey Rob, how you doing? Oh, um, we gotta host That's what I'm saying, game. There's everyone. gotta be a way. There has to be a way, dude. Thank you for that host call me, Rob. How are you? I am doing really well. We're we're messing around with some parallaxing here. You see how we're starting to get that holographic effect now? It's starting to take shape. We can actually see between the layers now. Yeah, Grim, that's what I want to do. Once I get the hologram effect down to where it sort of works and it looks three-dimensional, then I want to play with animating through this. Because like I was saying, I think we could do some really fun stuff here, you know? Oh, it's a, oh yeah, you're the one that bought the, um, that's right, you're on 7th Discord. You bought the, uh, the Lego shirt, the, uh, right here. <laughs> awesome, buddy. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have we have a couple here. You'll see them. Hi, water bottle. <laughs> so what those guys, what those are, those are like entrance animations. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating those entrance animations for my mods, um, supporters of the stream, things like that. We're going to, um, once I get all the mods done and people that support the stream, then I think what we're going to do is we're going to kind of play around with, um, I think for... Once we can get to subs and everything, I think we'll do small entrance animations for people that sub and things like that. Yeah, they're rigged to a stream deck right here, Galen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bear, thank you so much. Thank you for the follow. Thanks for being here. Stop by sometime and I'll make sure to check in on you. I dropped you a follow. You got one too? Yeah, man. So I got like this little, uh, this little meme cat. I was going to tie that cat into Catbot, so every time somebody pissed off chat, it would spawn that cat. But unfortunately, um, Mix It Up can't sense when Catbot gets triggered, so I can't do it. Um, it sort of has to, it just won't work. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. But we sort of made that. And then we've done one here for Metro. I don't know if you know who Metro is, Rob. Um... Uh, right there, Metro Bird, man. Yep. Um, because he's a big supporter. He's a big fan of what I do. He comes in a lot and things like that. And then we have, uh, right here is my own little character creation. Hi, Space Cat. Hey, Karakuya. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Space Cat is sort of our own little creation here. And, um, yeah, he's just a fun little guy. Bye, Space Cat. Thanks, Galen. If you like art, Rob, Galen would be another guy to follow. He is relatively new here on the platform for anyone that's in chat. Um, he is relatively new to the platform, but he is making comic book art, which is kind of cool because we don't have a lot of comic book artists here. So I would definitely recommend dropping Galen a follow, guys, if you're into um, if you're into if you're into that. Like he's a really nice guy. Beard's all you need. Yeah, right, Graham. So Galen, um, my. So what Galen's referring to is my mix it my mix play board used to have like buttons for Space Cat and everything, but my mix play board broke and I've not taken the time to sit down and do it. Um, so I've got I wiped it out because none of the buttons were working, and I just need to reprogram it because there's a way to go in Galen and actually program your own custom buttons and everything, and I've got to get back on that one of these days. One of these days. You can't grow a beard. 
Yeah. His beard, man, I'll tell you, there's days I love my beard and there's days I can't stand it. We're actually in it right now, Rob. This is called, um, this is called Moho. Um, it allows you to take vector art and animate it to give it life. So all the animations you see here are made with Moho. You can't grow a beard. I got you, Kuya. Yeah, hey, look, it's, uh, it's one of them things. I was born with a funny fact. I wasn't born with a beard, but I was born with three inches of black hair on my head. So I was hairy from the time I popped out. Like I've, I've been a hairy little very little thing since the day I was born so I can grow hair and not even think about it <laughs> but I don't like the hair in my head so there's that but yeah this software it's called moho Rob yeah so I don't use I don't really use I use affinity products Rob I use affinity designer affinity photo I use moho um, I haven't used an Adobe product in probably going on two and a half years now I, um, I made the switch. I started jumping over to other softwares and we just, that's the way we roll it. And, um, it's going really well for me. Um, I really enjoy it. It's, um, you know, I like it. I had mine six years. Your beard, Grim? My beard comes and goes. I'll shave it. I'll keep it. So... Okay, I'll show you this. I don't know how much you guys know about this, and I'm going to preface this with the fact that I am very new to this. But there's a program called DaVinci Resolve. I don't know how familiar you guys are with DaVinci Resolve. It is a video editing software, but it also has integrated Fusion into it. So if you know anything about Fusion, Fusion is a compositing software just like... After effect. So you can composite right within Fusion, right within the software. So if we go into, you see across the bottom here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's different buttons, right? Hey, Hellraiser, thank you for the host, buddy. How you doing tonight? You have a media, cut, edit, and you have a Fusion tab. The Fusion tab is a node-based compositing tool. Now that's the only kick to it, Rob, is it's node-based. It's not layer-based. So you have to use node to connect everything. This software is free. And there are people making really, really high-end motion graphics right within the software for completely free. Um, the other one I would recommend is a software called Natron that is also free. And it is also node-based. Uh, oh, me too. I'm the same way, Rob. Like, I'm constantly looking at new new software and stuff. And, and something we do a lot of here is we really like to um, look at, like, free software and new software to help people out and sort of get them going. That's why I keep, like, a constant list of you know, different softwares for people um, to kind of help them, you know, influence them and, and get them, you know, in the right direction. Oh, you're not, you're not. You'll get used to that, Rob. We, um, that's something we do really well here. For, and for anyone new here, we, this is a very sort of teaching educational stream, Rob. We, we, I love to help people if I can. So if you have any questions whatsoever, like software, techniques, whatever, feel free to stop me. Um, we'll take our time out and try to help people understand what I'm doing or explain it. That, that's not a problem. Everyone here has sort of gotten used to that. <laughs> it's kind of the way we run it. Um, but I, I enjoy that because I like helping people learn. So if you ever have a question, don't don't feel bad. Just uh, just let me know. All right, we need this forward. Okay, too far. You're welcome, buddy. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, that's something we do a lot of here. Um, I really enjoy it. You know, I, I think it's its a really good thing to be able to um, help other people out, you know, and, and pass on some of that information if you can. You know, I understand that sometimes it's not an option, but um, if I can help other people learn or just motivate people, why not, you know? <clears throat> All right, so for those that are wondering what the heck it is we're doing here, um, we are actually going to be making this look like a hologram. I'm not sure how well you guys can see this over here, but if we zoom in, we're taking this image that I drew and we're actually adding layers in between them. So this is called Z-depth or three-dimensional depth. So you can see, even though the image looks flat here on the left, on the right, you can see how we're creating space between the images, right? And what that's going to do is, I'll open that one back up. That's, that's a really good example for, we'll keep this one open. But this one really helps explain it for people that are coming in. Um, when you create Z-Depth, 
you can see how it spreads the files out like this, right? But what it does is when you play it, it allows you to sort of create that three-dimensional depth in space. So you can zoom through, you can pan, you can create sort of a holographic parallax effect, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's kind of what we're working on right now in case anyone's wondering. And I'm still relatively new to it, so we're, we're sort of learning it together. All right, let's go with... Hey, wedding man, how are you? Thank you for the sparks. We need more distance in these stars, I think. I don't like how close these are. So what kind of stuff you do, Rob, with After Effects? Do you do, like, uh, intros? Do you do, like, just motion graphic stuff? What kind of stuff are you doing? Pizza party, yeah, right. <laughs> Intro motion graphics, nice. I never got heavy into um, Mo After Effects. Um, I never got heavy into it. Um, I will, you know, I, I'm... When I stopped using Adobe, I had really just began tiptoeing into After Effects, so I sort of started getting into it, and before I got hooked, because there's not a whole lot of After Effects replacements, let's be honest, uh, before I got hooked on it and how good it is, I decided to start using other software, so I've been on like this constant quest for how do I find something to replace that, you know what I mean? And, and I've really been working on that. But it was too hard to practice without footage, so I moved to After Effects to make my own footage. Right. Yes. And see, that's really the really cool part about, like, yeah, you can do some stuff like that. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that was an Alita piece we did uh, right here, Galen. Um, that was a weekly challenge one, wasn't it? Was it? I don't remember. Yeah, and if you guys see anything over there in the um, slideshow you want to see up close, let me know. Yeah, this was a pretty fun piece. Um, I wanted to sort of go with a... I was trying to do like a... This would be a fun piece to animate, actually. I was trying to go with like a really deep sort of image here. And it turned out pretty good. I was really happy with it. Andy McFly. Hey, Andy. Thank you for the host. How are you? Good to see you. Hold on, let me get a shout out there for Andy. Guys, if you're not following Andy, please do. That is another creative streamer here on the platform, and she is fantastic. Uh, follow her, please, guys. Muggle Fuggles, hey, how you doing? We're actually working on an animation tonight, guys. For anyone that's wondering. Um, <laughs> Andy, thank you so much. I do appreciate that host. Day job, thank you for the host too, buddy. Um, we do some stuff like this. We do a lot of vector art. We do a lot of animations. We do things like that. Um, so we're currently working on animating some pieces and just having some fun with it and um just kind of talking about it and helping educate people so <laughs> jerry if seven really bans me i'll have to bother you more often don't worry day job you're welcome uh so for all the new faces out there coming with the host how you doing my name is jeremiah um we do a lot of vector art here we do animation we do creative streams obviously and um if you guys have any questions for me be sure to let me know um we're welcome you're welcome to ask questions and get involved and all those kinds of things Thank you for thank you for being here, and Andy, thank you for that help. You're awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Galen, Andy's great. Um, she is a really, 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 really good artist, and she's been around this platform for quite a while. And she just she's great at what she does. I love going in there. I I lurk on her a lot when I'm working because it gives me something to do. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. So look at this, Andy. Um. We're, I'm not sure how much you know about this, but this program allows you to do Z-Depth. So if you look at this, you see how this image on the left, you see what it looks like? Um, it gives you Z-Depth. So what we can do is, I, I'm, I, this is an experiment. I'm trying to turn this picture into almost a hologram. Because this is a picture that I made in Affinity right here. Because we've been doing a lot of scene stuff. Um, exactly, Andy. It's the same technology that they use for doing like old school Disney animation. Yep, that's exactly right. And um, so I'm, I'm kind of self-teaching myself on this stuff. And like here was the first time I used it. We were just looking at this actually. You can see the Z-depth on the trees and everything, right? So if we watch this, you'll see how the scene transitioned through, right? You'll see how the trees pull in through the image and everything. And it sort of creates that, that sort of a cartoon comic book look. You see what I'm saying? And so what I'm kind of doing <clears throat> is I'm kind of teaching myself how to do all this because... I don't really know a lot of it 
And um, so it's one of those things I just learn a little at a time. Yeah, it really is, Galen. It really is. Good, good fun. Yeah, man, we're. I'm. I'm. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying for sure. Like I. I I've got some. I, I would love to go back and take some of my pieces, and really mess around with giving them this. This. This death like this. All right, Deja. Thanks for that hose, buddy. Did you finish? Uh, did you finish that piece you were working on, Andy? The public demands it. <laughs> I saw you working on that piece with PT. She was uh, doing the um, the hot paint earlier. You did three? I saw the first one. I saw the cute little round face you were drawing. And then I, I lurked a little bit at work and then I came home. You did three? Holy smokes. A business card, a sketch of Jabberwockies, and the new sticker with the bunny hat. Right, right, right. Oh, have you seen these, Andy? Check these out. We've been doing stuff like this. How you doing, Mr. Seven? We've been doing little animation because I want to do some little like entrance animation for uh, supporters of the stream and stuff like that. Gabber Stater. That's a sketch. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like this. Hi, water bottle. Water bottle. And we got one up here for Metro. Yeah. <laughs> I've sort of been playing around with it. Like I wanna, I wanna do some more with it because my goal there is I'd really like to be able to do entrance animation for everybody who supports the stream and and things like that. Oh, thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. Um, no, what they so Galen, this software outputs really high res high res GIF files. Those are actually GIF files, believe it or not. This software does amazingly high quality GIF files that almost have no no like at all. Yes, they have the entrance animation and, and uh, uh, mix it up call or Rob. Yeah, so when they come in, like when Seven comes into the stream, and when Water Bottle comes into the stream, and se and so far we have Water Bottle, Metro, and Seven, Seven of Seven, and then we have uh, Space Cat, who's kind of my own original character. Hi, Space Cat. But oh, and for anyone that's wondering, my daughter does all the voiceovers here, so that's probably why you hear a little girl talking on my stream. My little girl does everything. If there's a voice on here, Hi, Space Cat. she does it. <laughs> Yep. That's a funny story. She um she heard me recording things ages ago when I started streaming. And she told me, she said, um she said, Daddy, I could do that so much better than you. I said, Alright. So I stuck the mic in her face and lo and behold, been that way ever since. Thank you, Galen. Here we go. I am pretty happy with this. Got a nice effect. Let's spread these stars out just a bit. <clears throat> that is daughter. Yeah, right? No kidding, Galen. <laughs> You're not lying, Rob. So, funny enough, I pulled her in stream with me, Rob, the other day. I had her in stream with me, and she does do it every now and then. Um, it it kind of depends on her mood. Uh, she, she thinks it's cool because she's on the internet, which... I guess that's cool when you're eight years old, right? You go to school, you tell your friends I'm on the internet, and they're like, you know. I guess that's hot potatoes. I, I think so, right? And I told her, I was like, yeah, you know, I guess. I could see where it could be cool if you were eight years old, though, right? I'm on the radio for seven. <laughs> all right. There we go. Now, how do I animate this? We've got the layers all set up. We've got some really good effect going. Now, how in the world do we animate this? Anybody know? Don't all raise your hands at once. All right, let's figure this out. So let's make a, I th I'm thinking keyframes. I think I'm thinking keyframes. We're going to do some keyframes. We're going to play with this. I think so. Andy, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Really appreciate it. Always good to see you. Really appreciate that, Hose. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really new to animating. I saw your stuff the other day, Andy, when I was in your, when your stream, 
you showed that um, Disney style animation you did. I, I don't know what character it was, but it was penciled. So you're clearly a, a very good animator. So I would definitely value your opinion. <laughs> it was Alice because she was walking up the rock. I think it was like sort of it might have been Mowgli. So going up. Very good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah, that looked amazing. See, everything I do is self-taught. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have any, like, formal. So, for me, it's like, I just have to dig in the hole until I hit something and then go, oh, yeah, I made something. <laughs> but I, you know, I do what I can. Thank you, Andy. Have, have a good meal. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Dig your hole in my direction. <laughs> Will do, Andy. Take care. And guys, again, if you're not following Andy, please do. Uh, really, really great content creator here. Well worth your follow. Just a good person. Check her out. Yes, yes, they did. I was I was lurking on them while I was working. Unfortunately, I was working day job, and um, I've been working like a dog here lately, man. All right, so let's do some keyframes. I had um, so we've had a lot going on at work. We've had a lot of upgrades and things like that, and so it's really just been kicking my butt. And um, lately. Uh, or at least for the next week, I'm going to be working a whole heck of a lot. And so uh, I won't be streaming Monday due to it because I've got to, uh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff I got to do. Let's start with, um, let's start with six seconds. We'll start with a six second animation. And then what we'll do, yeah, we've just got a bunch of updates and it's like I'm on call. So get this guy next week. Well, actually starting tonight, I'm on call. For the next 10 days for 24 hours straight so basically i have to work eight days next week starting t sunday so i gotta work sunday all the way through sunday and then i'm on call 24 hours a day for those eight days so i'll be coming home through it but i'll basically be on call for the whole thing which yeah it is what it is it's work it, it pays the bills right i'm hoping to get some time to stream but we'll We'll see. Okay, back to this. Okay, so if we go to the first frame, now how, I guess I can animate camera movement. So if we go here, where is the camera? So this is track camera. What is track camera gonna do? All right, so that essentially does that, and that makes a, a point, okay? Very cool. So what does zoom camera? Okay, so zoom camera literally zooms in and out like it says, and that adds a point. We're just doing a quick test real quick, and then we're gonna get started. So what is this? This is roll the camera. So obviously it's gonna roll the camera, right? Yeah, so it's gonna roll the camera. So you can do things like this if you want to. Okay. And this is pan tilt. Oh, so there's your pan, which is gonna kinda create that, right? So it says, pan, rotate the camera side to side, and up and down, hold shift. Ah, okay. Alt to orbit the center point? Wait. Oh, shift to constrain, alt to orbit the center point. Oh, there it is, guys. Look at that. Y'all see that? You see how that's starting to look like, a, almost like a hologram? I think that might be part of the look we want to go for. That's going to be part of it. Okay, so let's take the logo and we're going to put it outside and then we're going to move the logo in place because I don't want the logo to move. We want the logo to stay stationary. The logo is going to stay in the corner. And I like this dual, this split screen setup here, right? Because you can see, you can see what it's going to look like over here, but then you can see the movement here, which is good. So if we go like this, Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I'm glad I figured that out because I wasn't sure how that was going to work, but now I see it. All right. Well, let's go here. Hold on. I got a text real quick. Let me double check. Make sure it's not work. Yep. Okay. We're going to make this bigger. Yep. We're going to make stars too bigger. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I hope this isn't boring. Hope it's keeping you entertained. It's different, I know. 
but okay so that's going to be behind the suns good so now what we're going to do we're going to play with this um i think we're going to go to the beginning and we're going to go to this now what i want to do this is going to track the camera like that alt to move forward and back Okay, so that's going to move the entire camera, even the logo is going to move. So does that move? Does that move? Yeah, it does. Is there a way to make... That's a good question. I know, I don't think anyone here uses Moho. Is there a way to prevent... Is there a way to prevent something... Immune to depth of field? Do you think that would do it? So it doesn't animate? Because I don't want the logo to animate. Does anyone have any clue what that might be? Immune to depth of field, maybe? Perspective shadows, layer shadows, layer shading. We don't want motion blur, no masking, no physics. So I don't want the, lo the logo right here to animate. You see that? I want the logo to stay stationary. So if I go in here, it says immune to depth of field. There's got to be a way to tell it not to animate or not to not include that item in the camera movement, right? Immune to camera. Oh, right there. Right there. Immune to camera. Thank you, Rob. We'll keep Rob around. Rob, you're, you're permanent here now. I didn't even see it. It's one of those I was totally overlooking it. Because here's the thing, right? I don't want, I don't want, because you know, I want to, I want to learn these things and I don't want, I don't want the logo to move, right? Like I want the logo to stay static. You know what I'm saying? And I want everything else to sort of move. So if we, if we come in here now, so what should happen is, I'm not going to argue, well, thank you, buddy. Right, so let's see what this looks like. Yeah, you see that? You see how it's starting to create this almost, yeah, it almost looks like a hologram, right? In a way. Which is, again, that's sort of the look that I'm, I want to go for here. Okay, cool. Because, so before you got here, Rob, this is what I was talking about. Like, I thought it'd be really cool to animate this in a way so that it would... Well, I don't know if you were here, but animate it in a way so that it looks really cool, almost like a hologram. So, when I post it to social media, right, people will be browsing through and they'll see it. They'll see, like, they'll see it moving, right? And, and it'll almost catch people's eyes, which is really what I want. That way, because, you know, things like that make people stop and make them pay attention to what you're doing. So if they're scrolling through and they see, you know, something that really, really pops, it's one of those that can be an eye-catching thing. And so that's that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. So now, if we want this to be six seconds, then we'll go to the first frame and we're going to make... Three, exactly, exactly. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Because here's the other thing. I would like to, once I fully understand how to do this... Then I would like to be able to animate things coming through that 3D effect. So, like, let's say we animate this like this tonight. Maybe we'll reanimate it or revisit it, and we'll have that speeder actually go through the scene as it's sort of doing its effect, right? So we can kind of have dual styles of animation going, on, which I think would be really, really cool. But I don't want to. I don't want to make my brain explode just yet. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll go that that. And we'll set the track camera. All right. So what I just did was I made two key points. Um, and so no matter what I do in between, this should work. All right. So let's go. I'd say at the center, let's have it zoom out some. We'll go. Or would that be track? No. Nope. Um, hold. Let's see. It's got a little track camera side to side, up and down, alt to move forward and back. Okay. All right, let's just see what that looks like right there. I know that's very simple, but you see how you have that sort of a zoom back and then that zoom back in effect, right? And so what we can do is we can play with this. So I think what I'll do is at this point here, We'll just play around with this here. We'll take this camera. 
And let's see if we can't do like some sort of a... Uh... Let's just see what this would look like. Right? No, that's moving that way because of that. All right. Don't want to do that. So let's get rid of this. And then what we'll do is we'll go here to here. And then we'll rotate it. We'll just kind of rotate it to the right like this. And then what we'll do is we'll pan it through. Sort of out like this. Right? Now, should we have it? Yeah, because we want it to loop perfectly, right? So let's go like this. Now, I don't like how it sort of has that jump cut. Yeah, and see, that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. You know what I mean? Because I really want it to look sharp. And I've never truly messed with this. So it's one of those things where I'm sort of just learning how to control the camera like that. But you see here how, you see that depth? See how the stars are moving separately and the suns are moving? And even the city back there is moving separately. See what this looks like. Okay, so that works there in terms of the way it functioned right there. Because I've animated a lot of stuff in the software, but I've never animated this, which is what I'm saying. So let's try to go, if we go here, what would happen if we also do like a pan through at the same time? Or like a pan out? I don't even know what that's going to look like. Now see how that's not... You see what that's doing? It's doing like a jump. And I don't really... Because it's starting at frame one. It hits the last frame of that. And then it jumps. Bang. I need to tween that somehow. So that it's not jumpy like that. So it's like... Alright, let's try and see if we can get a smooth animation with this one. You know, that's smooth. Okay, let's try this. Hope you guys don't mind learning with me. If it gets extremely boring, we can um, jump into some art. Hey, Ruby Ace, how are you? Thank you for the sparks. I don't like what that's doing. I don't know how to make those two work hand in hand. There's got to be a way to make that system function just a little bit smoother. I'm not sure what it is, but that's why we're doing this. We're learning. But we could do something like this, right? Where it's sort of... That I'm not sure of, Rob, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. So, so I've done a lot of bone animations and stuff, right? But I've never done, I've never done um, too much easing with the camera in the software. This is actually my first time panning the camera. And it, so here's your camera control. We have track camera, zoom camera, roll camera, and pan tilt camera. And you set a camera path. I think so, Grim. That's what I think I'm trying to do. Can I get an opinion on my art? Hey, Mr. Whiskers, how are you? Yeah, sure. Um, if the best thing for you to do, let's drop this real quick uh, since we got some folks in here. Whoops, I didn't. Would help if I spell my commands right. So there's my social info, guys. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, DLive, all that stuff. Here's my Discord info. If you want to shoot me a message on Discord, that would be the best way to get a hold of me for stuff like that, Mr. Whiskers. Just send me a message on there, and I can get back to you. Um, thank you for that follow, Ruby Ace. I appreciate that. Thank you for the support. All right. So let's let's rewind this. So here's what happens. Can you right click on something on the keyframe to unlock auto ease in? Yes, you can, Galen. Yes, you can. Um, there is definitely that functionality. No, Galen, you're good. You're good. I appreciate the input. Absolutely. Possibly a pan with a straight tracking. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. 
But you know what? Hey, that that's why we do this, right? We do this to learn. And that, that's the, you know, that's the whole goal here. And that's the thing with me, you'll learn. Being here, like, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely all for learning. So, not a problem. Oh yeah, thank you for the host, buddy, over there in D-Live. I appreciate it. Alright, let's... Alright, let's, let's experiment with this more. We'll delete this. What do you got? Uh... Oh, this is what you're... This is what you have on your thing right now. That's not bad at all, Whiskers. I like the usage of colors. Thank you for the diamond. I like the usage of colors. It looks really good. I think it looks great. Keep being awesome, Senpai. Hey, Kuya, thank you. And thank you for the diamond, buddy. I appreciate that, Dono. Thank you so much. I like it, Mr. Whiskers. It looks really good. Very clean. Definitely my style of stuff. What are you using to make it? If you don't mind me asking. Okay. Photoshop, nice. Well, it looks it looks fantastic. You've done a great job. Be very proud of that. I like it. Very clean. Can you set camera point? So, can you guys see the keyframes down here when I'm making them? We got a host. Here, let, let's Welcome do this. We're gonna set this frame. Hold on one second. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set this frame. We're gonna set a track camera frame, and we're gonna set a zoom frame. I remember you now. You're the Vector Art guy. That is right, Arctic. That's me, buddy. How are you, dude? Good to see you, man. Ruby, thank you for that, host. I'll be back shortly. The other option is to make it a wide turn instead of a rigid turn. But I can't really see the tracking. Yeah, it's a little strange. How you doing, Arctic? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, I do the arts. Sometimes we do other stuff, but generally it's going to be art around here. Right now we're working on animating this sort of into a hologram, if you will. So what you see over here on the left is a drawing that I did a while ago. Um, and we're basically going to turn this into like a holographic effect almost. We're kind of learning it together and playing around. Um, it's right here. I'll show you again. We'll pull it up. Right here. Looks really good. Super clean. I like it. I think it looks good. Clean, neat. I think it looks nice. But then again, I'm a fan of clean. Like that that that's my style of art, right? So for me it, it makes sense. Alright, let's go back to the end here. We're gonna copy these keyframes to the last frame. And, and six seconds may be too long on this. We may be absolutely overdoing it. But let, let's just do a simple animation and let's render it real quick. So what we'll do... We got a new follower. We'll go here. Hey, Arctic. Thank you for the follow, buddy. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, over on Mixer. Yeah, man. Yeah. I have more over on Mixer. But uh, thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah. So that's really... So what I do, uh, Arctic, is um, I have... I use OBS so that I, I still get the FTL functionality of Mixer. But then I restream to YouTube and DLive at the same time. So I'm restreaming to actually three platforms simultaneously. Because on YouTube, I upload a lot of content like tutorials and stuff like that. Grim, yes, that is my daughter. She does all my voiceovers. She does. How you doing, Mr. Seven? Hi, water bottle. Yeah, she does every single voiceover for the channel. That's my little girl. Just woke up, 10.32, dang. It's uh 9.32 for me. We're, I'm Eastern, Dan, I'm North Carolina, Arctic. I'm gonna try something real quick, guys. Let me. 
bear with me, please. All right, yeah, right on, dude. I was actually born in South Carolina. Um, I was born in Anderson, South Carolina. Is where I was born. Um, a whole long time ago, though. If that if that place even exists anymore, <laughs> that was a long time ago. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's where I was born, and I'm on the east coast of North Carolina now. I'm up near uh, the Outer Banks. So, um, Kitty Hawk, Nags Head, Kill Devil Hills, uh, that whole area, the Outer Banks, right south of Hampton Roads, where Norfolk is. I'm sure you know where Norfolk is, being in the Navy and everything. Um, right in that general area. My son would look at me funny since he's 25. Oh, he sure would, Grim. Sure would. So, it's a funny story with me. Um, my daughter, Grim, she heard me recording voiceovers for the stream. And she caught me midway and was like, I could do that so much better, Daddy. And so she's been doing them ever since. She's been doing the voiceovers ever since. So, what do you want, Odie? Is the cat bothering you, buddy? Is the kitty cat bothering you? Oh, there's Frodo. Yep, there's Frodo. What are you doing, Frodo? Y'all will watch. You'll watch, right? Frodo likes to jump on the green screen and he pulls it down. He'll do it. Yeah, I've done a lot of few things. I like having that slideshow there. It's funny because I almost forget it's there sometimes. And, um, but it's nice when you guys call out like different things because it, uh, it helps me remember what's in there because there's so many pieces in there that sometimes I forget it's even running. You know what I mean? But it's nice. Hey, Madman. Outer Banks is beautiful. Very touristy now, though, Madman. Very touristy. Yeah, he did, Grim. Call me out. Very touristy now. Uh, it used to be it was not as touristy as, like, say, Virginia Beach. But now it is, like, it's becoming a very tour to every area because it's more like it's more like Virginia Beach was, like, 20 years ago where it wasn't quite all the commercialism. So it's it's more like beach focused, like Virginia Beach used to be, right? All right, Kayla. That might be the way to do it. You lived in Norfolk for eight years. Yeah, so yeah. Yep. I lived in Virginia Beach and Chesapeake when I was um, in middle school, I want to say. And my mom used to work in Norfolk. She used to work at the shipyard. Uh, Norco? Nor North Shipco? Nor Norco? North Shipco? Whatever the heck that is. My mom worked there for years. Um, right up there in um, in uh, Portsmouth, I want to say that is. Or my, Port I don't know if it's Portsmouth or Norfolk. I was a little kid when my mom was doing that. But yeah. Portsmouth, yeah, okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember exactly which one that was, but my mom worked there for, like, forever. Lived in Suffolk, yep, yep. Yep, small, small world, isn't it, dude? You never know. You never know. I mean, you know, we all end up... We all end up being much more connected than we realize sometimes, you know? Kind of losing faith in my weekly challenge piece and design a regular challenge. Grim, you know, hey, here, here's the thing with the weekly challenge. Like, if you, if you, you know, don't, don't feel forced at all. If you want to take part, I'd love to see what you got. Uh, have fun with it. Enjoy it. You know, there's no criticism. If you just want to post something and get feedback, you know, feel free. Have fun with it, buddy. You're dead middle, so you're going to be... You're over near, you're going to be near, like, south of Raleigh area then. Right, Madman? You're going to be, like, west of Raleigh a little bit, south of Raleigh. So you're doing, yep, yep, I know where you're at. My family have been Raleigh, yep. So I am I am about 20 minutes from the beach, so I'm at the northern end of the Outer Banks. And, um, yeah, yep.
So for all the new faces here, hello, uh, my name's Jeremiah. If you guys have any questions for me, we do sort of a teaching stream. We're learning right now, but if I can help you in any way, learn some art or something, be sure to let me know. Glad to help answer questions if I can. Frodo, would you leave Odin alone, please? Hey, Water Bottle, how are you? It is good to see you. We're messing with animating that stream. We're turning it sort of into a hologram water bottle. In a way. Thanks, Arctic. So were you relatively new to Mixer, Arctic? Or have you... How long have you been over here? Because I know I've followed you on DLive for a while, but I don't know how long you've been on this platform. Waiting on some spicy chicken nuggets. To be delivered? So what about, a, I had a question, since you probably know more about this than I do. With the Mixer Elixir, um, if, if I post, um, if I post the, that emote in a non, a stream that, where people aren't using Mixer Elixir, what do they see? I did a real cool effect in Designer, but no clue how I did it. Well, hey, Grim. No, you steamed on, oh, you did it on Beam, okay. Don't want to make food. Yeah, right, right, right. They see the emote name. Okay, just see text. Gotcha. Because we did the little, uh, where is it? We submitted the little blink cat today. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. He is, he is so funny, dude. He turned out really good, too. Like, I was really, really pleased with how he looked. It is, it's really fantastic. And I like some of the other tools that go with it. I'm, I'm actually going to be working on some more emotes for it. I've got some more really cool ideas. I've got some more really cool ideas. Yeah, I'm going to be making more. But I uh, do not expect any sort of um, contribution toward them in the future. <clears throat> it makes a mixer really custom. Yeah, yeah, it does, Arctic. It does, it does. Hey, Rob. So, it's weird. Like, I like what it's doing, but I don't understand why it's making a jump right here. You see that? How it almost zooms out right here? In a weird way. So, I think what I'm going to do... Like, it does this weird, like... It's like where it starts the next turn, it does this strange pop-out effect. It's like it moves too fast all of a sudden or something. You see that one frame, how that one frame isn't consistent right there? Maybe, Grim? You see that right there? How it pops right there? That's eye drawing, man. That's too much. Too much movement. Have you? It's just that one freaking frame. It's almost like it needs another frame in there. It's like we need a frame between those two or something. But it, it's creating that frame automatically, so I don't understand why. I was on a platform called Hitbox first, partnered, then left there and went to Twitch, then Beam, then Twitch, then Mixer, then D-Live. <laughs> so you've been all over the place. Well, I know I found you on D-Live. You can. You can, Rob. And that's what I'm thinking about doing. I think what I'm going to do... Check this out. I'm going to move these frames down. And we're going to add a frame in here. I don't start with the beginning and an end. Maybe. You can't. There is an onion skin. Um, I don't think it'll work for this animate. This style of animation, Grim. But there is an onion skin you can turn on. Okay, do that first, then go to the mid and copy and paste the first one at the end. Okay. My Navy job every six months when I'm not on short duty, I lose all my viewers. Right, yeah, I could see where that would become a problem.
Okay, we're gonna grab this. I hope everybody had a good one. You love Beam. So I wasn't around when it was Beam. For me, I started... I started... Let's see, I started on Mixer just a little over a year ago for me. Hey, Madman, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. You did the frames. It's trying to get to the last frame and make a pit stop at the middle one. Yeah, that might be. That's no worries, Madman. I appreciate that. Right, Grim. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I agree. And see, so you'll you'll notice here, like, Arctic, I'm not, like, a platform-dependent person. I'm not one of those, like, I'm, I'm all for, like, hey, you want to stream here? Go stream here. You know what I mean? You want to stream here? You want to stream Twitch? You want to stream Live? Go for it. Like, I'm all for supporting people wherever they want to stream. Um, You know, and, and so, for me, it's like, exactly. So, you know, I'm not going to bash any one or the other. Or, you know, I get it. People want to stream different locations, and that's awesome. You know, I've always looked at it like at the end of the day, you're the one creating the content. You should dream wherever you want. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's really the key. Right. We're going to delete these. Pardon me while I learn this, guys. Because I want to see if it does it. I want to. I want to play around with it and see if it does it either anywhere where I make it. I like the look it has. Oh, so that would be because of the the shorter keyframe distance. It just speeds that up. So I wonder if should we try to animate the speeder? How do you guys feel about that? Should we animate the speeder going across while this is happening? Or is that just going to get way too crazy in the brain? Oh, you're good, Grim. You are good. Trust me. I'm just as new. Like, you, everything that you've seen me do... Everything you've seen me do has literally been... So one thing you guys will really learn here is like, I'm all about learning. And you'll see me get an idea in my head. I won't even know if I can do it. And I'll say, let's do it. And we do it. You know, and it may not be perfect. It may not be 100%, but I'm all about learning. And and so what you're watching right now is me literally learning as we go. And um, because I think a lot of people, you know, they... they um, we talked about this before, but like what people don't see is the hours you put in off stream, right? Like the reason I can do the art that I do and the things that I do is because I put in so many hours when I'm not in front of you guys. And we were talking about this the other day and I hope everybody's cool with it. Like I want to start doing some learning on stream, my own learning. And I want to start doing like working on personal projects on stream. Like I'm working on some kids books. We're working on um, a web comic. We're working on some stuff like that. You know what I mean? And so I want to start working on some of the things that I'm working on and learning on stream instead of spending, uh, you know, the time streaming and learning because it'll help me accomplish some of the goals that I want to accomplish faster and still be able to stream with you guys. And that, that's kind of where we're at right now. <clears throat> I've done like three animations to procreate. Hey, nothing wrong with that, buddy. You got to start somewhere, you know? Like Rob, I'm sure if you ask Rob, I mean, it's probably the same for him. I mean, you know, we all start somewhere and, that, that, and there's nothing wrong with that. That is really weird how it makes that pop. But I think you're right, Rob. I think it's the way it, it's 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 loading that one frame between there for whatever reason. Because I wonder what it would look like if we did this. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. You know? That's 100% it. I'd love to see some of your stuff, Rob. I'll have to check your stuff. Do you stream any of your stuff, Rob? Or do you just... Are you just a viewer? Hey, Galen. Now, I was thinking about starting, but just a viewer right now. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, the thing is, dude, I, I think anything that we do could absolutely 
you know, help other people. So if you ever enter, I'd love to see your stuff, man. It hit you on Patreon. Arctic, thank you, buddy. You didn't have to do that. I appreciate it, man. Awesome. Big up. Thanks for that support, dude. My big thing is mix play designs right now. See, I've got to, I've got to dig more into my mix play stuff, man. I used to have a pretty slick mix play setup, and then it all just went to crap. Okay, I like the way that's looking. Modern day Bob Ross. Who's that, Grim? I have a question on how you get those awesome glows. Yeah, yeah, King, what's up? Uh, you mean, which ones? Are you talking about, like, this guy here? You? Oh, well, thank you, Grim. I appreciate that, buddy. Absolutely. Hey, man. Same, 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 Rob. Absolutely. Like, if you ever see something and you're like, how the heck do you do that? Hit me up, man. Like I'm, I'm all about like you'll 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 get to learn, man. I'm all about like that exchange of anime of information. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm not one of those that guards my secrets. Like uh, King just asked in chat, like, hey, how you do that? So we're gonna break it down real quick, and we're gonna show him for Illustrator. So for Illustrator, I'm not 100% sure, King, because I don't use Illustrator. But like, let's take this glow. Yeah, you're all right, buddy. You're all right. So if you see this glow right here around this fire, right? Um, are you talking about something like this, King? Let's close Natron. We don't need Natron up anymore. This card. But Arctic, thank you so much, dude. I really do appreciate that support, man. That means a lot. For anyone that chooses to support me, whether it be monetary or just hanging out, I, I really do appreciate that support. You guys, uh, you guys are the reason I do what I do. My tired typing. <laughs> Let me know, King, if this is what you're looking for. I'll, I'll, I'll get back. I need glowing lines like Tron? So if I were going to do glowing lines, I would do them similar to this. So let's say that I had this as an artboard, right? And we had a dark artboard similar to this. I would take something like this, do a sort of... Let's say a uh, bright blue like this. Now in um, Affinity, you can add um, you can add effects to any any vector shape. So I'm going to grab an effect right here, and I'm going to give it an outer glow, sort of like this, right? But then what I'll do is I'll come in and grab this blue color and give that outer glow that same blue color. And there you go. I would do stuff like this, and then of course you could do varied shapes. You could do things like that right in there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could, you you could try this. I don't know how that process is going to translate over to Illustrator, but you could certainly try that. Hey there, it's your girl. How you doing? I am doing well. So, I mean, um, I hope I don't know if that answers it for you, King, but I would do it something like that. I'll send you the drawing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go right ahead, buddy. Send me that drawing, and we'll uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, so let's come in here. Um, get back to this, so we'll go here. We were animating this, and then we're gonna jump to this, and we're gonna animate through the scene. That's cool, though. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're um we're working on we're working on sort of creating a hologram in a way with this image. This is an old image that I created, and we're we're kind of working on giving it sort of a three D sort of hologram feel. And uh, kind of playing around with it. It is grim. I like that a lot. Um, Restream actually put that functionality in there. That way, you know, everybody can sort of communicate, and there's not that barrier, right? So you guys can see what all the parties are saying. I think it's fantastic. It works out really well. Works out really well. All right, so let's render this out real quick. It's only six seconds. It shouldn't be that hard to render. I think what we'll do is we'll and we'll do it as let's do it as an MP4 real quick, and we'll go to the desktop with it, and we'll render that real fast. Let me see what you got here, bud. If you guys have any questions, let me know. We're gonna take a second. 
So, I'm assuming you want that glow on the inside, King, where the shapes are in the inner circle. Yes, what you see right here, you see this, Grim? That is your viewing area or your stage, if you will. That is what shows you what you're gonna see. So as you, that, that was a good observation, honestly. Because what you can see here, right? The, what you see is the inside of that square. So you can see what's happening as we render this out. And we're gonna see what this thing looks like. We'll play it back. And you can see it doesn't take long to render, right? And you can render as, uh, you can render as like MP4, you can render as a GIF file, you can render as, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Almost, almost like a destiny type ghost glow. I'll tell you what, let me look at it, King, when I get done streaming, and I'll shoot you some ideas. What I'll do is I'll, I'll throw a couple, um, you're doing it in vectors, you can't animate all the parts, right? Now that makes sense. Um, when I get done streaming, I'll take a look at it and break it down, and I'll send you some, like, um, some different ideas. So this right here is going to be 1080 by 1080 resolution. The reason I do that, Grim, is because um, Instagram and Twitter both support 1080 by 1080. So it's actually a square and it's best for mobile input because I'll upload this to straight to in Instagram and uh, Twitter. So it'll be, you see that right there? So that's going to be sort of what it would look like. And you can see we sort of have that 3D holographic effect, right? Now, honestly, there's some there's some things to learn there, and there's some there's some takeaway to that. But yeah, drop it in there, drop it in that same message, King, because I can open an AI file in Infinity, and we can play with it. Okay. Yes, that's that's what we were talking about. So I think we're going to do that, Galen. Um, let's go back to the beginning of the animation. And we're going to grab the speeder. And we're going to move it. And so we're going to go right there with it. So what we'll do is where the animation... I think we're going to speed the whole thing up. So I'm going to take the entire animation and go up to like four seconds and then we're going to drop this down to 96 frames. I want this a little faster. Yeah, so we'll have to redo that one portion, which is fine. We'll redo this portion because so that's good to know that you can't actually redo that render right there, which is fine. You may have figured out the jump. What do you got? So green named me moderator, yes. Uh, I have three mods. We have Water Bottle, we have uh, Fista, and we have Miller. Um, water Bottle's here the most. Right click on the middle keyframe. All right, so let's add the keyframes back. Smooth the linear. Oh, you know, and that's sort of what uh, Galen was getting at. Because you can do the whole ease in and out linear, you can do Smooth is the default. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea, Rob. All right. So let's, um. Okay. So let's do this. There you go. All right. Well, then let's get rid of this. And let's try that again like we were going to do. If we were going to have it sort of. We'll go to 120. Do you own this, Rob, or was there a demo? Demo. Gotcha. We're really good pizza software, dude, to be honest with you. Like, if you're, if you're interested in all in, like, bones and those sort of things and, like, rigging and that kind of... Well, you can do... You can use, what is that one plugin for um, After Effects? I think it's called Duik, D-U-I-K, I think it is. And you can do similar bone style animations with um, with uh, vector art within Duik, or within After Effects, I believe, right? I don't know if you're familiar with that. 
Alright, where's our speeder at? But we're gonna have the speeder come across the stage. So this is going to be the only problem with that right there, is we didn't extend that out twice. Oh yeah, this thing, this thing runs, this thing runs almost anything, Rob. It has a bone native tool, does it, Galen? I, I'm not sure. You guys would be a better, um, you guys would be a better judge of that than me, to be honest. I think so. You, you, you're probably right, dude. You're probably not wrong. Again, I know very little about um, Affinity, or Affinity, about, um, you know, uh, Adobe stuff, so. Maybe. Rob would probably know. Rob, does uh, After Effects have native bone stuff? Let's reel this. He would probably know. Actually, not sure. I don't know either. Because, like, in this software, you can do, like, bone rigs and all that stuff. It might. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you all. I haven't used After Effects in probably... It's been, it's been a while. It's been a while had bone tools okay i'm experimenting with doing motion comics and moho galen i've been playing with that i'm trying to do a motion comic or at least what i think a motion comic would look like duplicate layer speeder trail too Let's take the speeder and move it. I wanted to extend that trail. Okay, so speeder trail two needs to come in some. Fancy. Fancy. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, I don't know. All right, so let's have the speeder off of the scene like this. And we'll have it come to the end. We'll go to 96 frames. Sorry, right, guys. I know this is a lot of moving around, but we will get there. I promise. Okay. Speeder trail two. We'll delete that one. Then we're going to have the speeder. We're going to have it go all the way through the scene. We'll have it go to the completely to the other side. So like this, right? That's exactly what we'll do. Okay. So we're going to go here. And then what we'll do is we'll keyframe it over to 96 frames and we'll drag it straight across. And then have it go between the rocks. So we'll have it move a little bit faster. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll move this back and we'll come to 96 and we'll move it further out. And that should speed up those frames there for us. Thank you, Grim. Appreciate it. All right, so we want this to be faster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we'll do, let's try that linear. Isn't linear what you said, Rob? Okay. So I think what we'll do is we'll put a slight bounce in it. We'll have it sort of bounce down as it comes through. Yeah, we'll go with a slight bounce, but not that big. So we'll kind of go here with it like this, and we're going to make it even faster. So we'll go back to the first frame, and we're going to drag it way over here, and way over here. Okay. And you know what we're going to do? Watch this. I know exactly what we're going to do. Let's try motion blur on this. And we'll set the motion blur to 10. So what we're going to do is this will actually have a motion blur when it renders out. So this will have a little bit of a... Um, it's a little bit of a blurred effect. It'll sort of make it look like... Yeah, that's going to look good. Okay, yeah. 
And then, of course, we could do, like, extra particles coming around the back and everything. But we're not going to worry about that for right now. So let's do, as this scene sort of does this, let's grab this. And see, it's cool, because, like, I've already learned things tonight, right? And now we're going to do what Rob said. We're going to take... We're going to rotate this sort of like this. Right? Okay, so then what we'll do... It will come here and we'll rotate it back this way. On a trail, it needs less hard. Yeah, well, that's the one thing. We'll have to play with that, Grim, because I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't actually plan on this to be animated. So it sort of is. I drew it the way that it would sort of be concealed behind that rock. So I'm going to have to play with it a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to sort of mess around with it. We're, we'll add some, we'll add some, uh, we'll add some stuff to it here. We'll add some stuff to it here in a minute. Hey, NCV, it was pretty good. How was yours? zoom out I'd say right about here about like that so we'll, we'll erase that thanks for stopping by can't okay uh, SVG is fine I'll look at it I'll look at where you started King and we'll play around with it and see what we can kind of do with it we'll see what we can do with it Well, here's the thing, Grim. I want to show you this. So, you don't see motion blur until it renders, right? So, if we go ahead to, like, let's say we go to this frame right here. I don't even think you'll see it on the rendered frame. Yeah, you see the motion blur on the rocket? You guys see that? It's going to look like that as it goes through. Now, I'll tone that motion blur down so it's not as blurry. But when that thing flies through the scene, it's going to have a nice motion blur to it. So, it's going to go like, shoo, so it's really going to look like it's a speeder, right? It's going to be bright now. Thanks, Arctic. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, it's it's good fun, like, you know, and, and it's fun learning this stuff oh, as you go. Um, Let's go with 60%. Welcome, Bad Merc, what's up, dude? Thank you for the host, man. How are you? Let's render this out. Yeah, that's going to look really cool. We'll taper that tail off, guys. We'll, we'll play with that. We'll, we'll, we'll... Yeah, you can add sound in Moho. Yeah. You sure can, Grib. Mm -hmm. I would show you some files that I added sound to, but I cannot because they have copyrighted music and because we're currently restreaming to YouTube, that'll end up in a bad situation. So we're not going to do that. Yeah, guys, if you're not following Bad Merc, please do. He is another content creator here on the platform. He does games and he does art. Super cool guy. Uh, very friendly. Very knowledgeable. Check him out. You will not be disappointed. You will not be. Yeah, Art by Galen is another one. Guys, if you are looking for creative follow people to follow, check them out. They're really, really good folks. Really good folks. Lurk. All right, Rob. There's some really good people here. In Arctic, are you restreaming here? We got a new yeah. Okay. Follow. Give Arctic a, a shout out too, if you would, Water Bottle. Uh, he is a, a game streamer. He is. I met him on D Live, but he's streaming here as well. Uh, really nice guy. I didn't know he was actually streaming here until today. I thought he was only streaming over there. King Blueberry, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Oh, wow. And thank you for the host. We wow. A host. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Much appreciated. We are playing with... We're playing with animating this and almost turning it into... If you're a child of the 80s like I am, we're almost creating our own little hologram, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Did we used to play with? I know I used to play with a lot of holograms when I was a kid. So <laughs> we'd get little holographic cards and stuff. So that's sort of what we're doing here. I, me too, Arctic. They were awesome. You're welcome, buddy. And when we get done animating this, we're gonna jump into some art. Um, and if anyone has any questions about my style and everything, we've got a little slideshow over here uh, to kind of show you where we're at. Yes. What is this? 
file here. Let's get rid of you. That's where we did the bump. I don't want to do the bump. We're just going to have it fly straight through. Yeah, right, Grim? Right? We had a lot of holograms when I was a kid. We're going to add that slight... Let's go slightly up. And then we'll, we'll taper that tail off. But again, don't forget, we're going to have a motion blur hitting that tail, right? So you're going to have sort of this... Yeah, you're going to have this sort of effect. You'll see. We'll get it right. One way or another, we'll get this right, guys. I promise. So, for anyone out there that, that's questioning, you know, can you learn these things? Can you do these things? You absolutely can. Because this right here was all a thought that I had in my mind today. And, um, I... Here we are. We're making it, right? So, if you've ever wondered if you can do things like this, you absolutely can. Just apply yourself. You'll figure it out. This is how the Velvet Blacklight poster should have been. Yeah, no kidding. All right, so we've got that. I like that. That's going to have a nice motion bar. Okay, so we're at this point here. Now, I want it to sort of shift from here. But that's what I want. So we'll go here. We'll lock it into this position. And let's see what this looks like if we go here with it. So we'll kind of go over to this side. You know how cool those things were when we were kids? They used to have like a whole wall of them. You know what I mean? We'd go to, oh gosh, what were the stores in the mall? Somebody help me out here. They had like all that stuff. What am I thinking of? I'm an old man now. They were in like every mall back in the 90s. They, didn't, they were those stores, Sam Goodies. What is the other one? All the kids would hang out there and buy like, geez, I cannot think of it. Spencer's. Remember? Spencer's gifts, yep. I think they're still around. But they had like, you know, the whole walls of blacklight posters and stuff like that. Yeah, that's old school, man. Well, let's go, we'll move this over to here. Nope. See, I don't like how this, I've got to get better with these camera commands because it's like the way they track is weird. They don't, until they finish one, they don't start the second one. <clears throat> My town had a small mom pop shop called Gypsy Rose. It sold stuff like incense, candles, posters, hemp jewelry. Right, yeah, exactly. Yep. And I know when I was a kid, like we would go into Spencer's and things like that. Blink it. So, we need to educate. I want to do something, Water Bottle. We need to, um, we need to make a command for Mixer Elixir. So that if people are curious what that is, I want to have a command for it. So that we can drop a link back. And, uh, yeah, I can, Water Bottle. Yeah. Guys, let me know if that music's too loud. Please. Um, we'll go right there with it. Um, I want to make a command for that. Um, water bottle so remind me because I'd like a way to shout that out just in case people are curious that way we can get people that know about it you know what I mean because people are going to see those uh, mixer elixir remotes come in and they're going to be like what the heck is that like um, and we can sort of educate them on the what that is and give them a link to it so they can yeah I'd like to do that plus it would help out you know mage and everything and get some promotion going on that Okay, so we're there. Good. It is, Arctic. Fantastic idea. Like, I love how clean it is. Okay, let's render this real quick. I just want to render this real fast. So, for anyone who's curious, this was our first render. You see this? Again, how we sort of have that effect in the zoom and everything. And this was sort of just a render to see what the heck it would look like. So what we're going to do now, we're going to render it with the motion blur just so we can get a really good idea as to what this is going to look like in an MP4. So we'll render this real quick. I'll take a drink. You do any creative stuff, Arctic? Anything creative at all or mainly just games? And water bottle. Anybody, let me know if that music is still too loud, please. Be glad to turn it down. You paint. Oh, okay. Minis. Nice. 
I've never done that. I've never done any sort of mini paints. It could be. Let's skip to another one. Yeah, I mean, if they're too loud, just let me know. What is my volume on? Let me know how that sounds, water bottle. Like Warhammer Horde. Oh, okay. I had a friend that used to be really big into Warhammer, and he would paint a lot of his own minis and stuff. I've not done it in quite a while. I used to play some tabletop games, but I never really got into my own minis or collecting them. I just sort of used what my friends had. Yeah. Awesome. Here. So we'll go here. Close this. But yeah, here was that Alita, um, Galen, you were looking at earlier. When we got that hose. Um, this was a fun little piece. I think we animated this. Did we animate this? What about? I don't remember. You can get figurines like anime stuff and paint, right? Okay. Dude, that'd be awesome, Galen. I actually did this after watching a movie with my daughter because she was really hyped to check it out. And, um. You know what? I think you're right, Water Bottle. We did animate this. Okay, so let's look at that motion blur a couple times. Motion blur looks good. I want a little more bounce in the ship. I want a little more movement on the camera, a little more bounce in the ship, but I like the way it has that sort of a hologram effect to it. Definitely, it's definitely looking cool. We gotta play with this a little bit more though. I wanna get some more, and don't don't mind that black screen. This will loop perfectly. Like it'll loop, it'll loop perfectly. It'll loop perfectly, trust me. A little too fast, yeah. Hey TH, a little too fast, okay. So we'll spread the, um, let's spread the frames out. Let's go here. We'll go back to that 144 frame set. And we'll drag these down. You can. You could, you could take out the Z-Depth completely. You could, you could make anything motionless. Um, because what you can actually do is you can, you can, you can isolate certain things. Um, and you can tell the camera not to affect them, essentially. Yes, um, like this. I'll show you, Water Bottle. So, if we go to the speeder. Okay, so we'll go here to the end, and we'll go get rid of this point in the middle drag this over here and then we'll go back to the beginning yeah you can make anything you want sort of impervious to the the camera motions okay so that'll look good there so if we render this out well, let's go to a scene where the speeder is and you'll see the motion blur that's there so you can render that one scene so we can see what the motion blur is going to look like as it cuts through the scene, right? And I think the motion blur looks good. You guys think that's too much motion blur? Because we can tone the motion blur up, down. We can do some stuff with it. I think it looks pretty cool. It might be a little heavy. Let's go look at that. Uh, so currently we have the motion blur set to a 10 frame count with 60 frame percentage? Not really sure what that means. So let's go frame count, let's try five, and let's try 50. Cause I'm assuming obviously the lower we go, the, the dip more different, you know, it's gonna look. Oh, I see what the frame, I see what the frame count is. It's how many frames are blended together is what that is. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. You're getting really good with this vector eye. Wow, thank you, I really appreciate that. And yeah, we're, you know, I draw constantly, so I'm, I'm hoping, <laughs> I hope it's showing, I, I try. We're, we're trying, we're trying. But thank you for the comment, I really do appreciate that. 
<clears throat> Actually, I think instead of a leader, there's a young girl named Tilly Locky who locks all her arms and is sponsored or endorsed by a company who makes high tech. Might draw her. Huh, okay. Oh, so I see exactly what that did. It did multiple frames. Hi, water bottle. All right, cool. <laughs> You'll get to see my kid tonight, water bottle. She went up to the water, down to the waterfront. They were doing a big movie on this building on the ocean. And uh, so her and mom went to watch it. And they're going to, when they come back, I'm sure she'll want to jump in and see everybody. So I'm sure she'll go, where's water bottle? She's always looking for water bottle. Whisper. Um, hmm. I got an idea. I will message you on Discord. I will message you on Discord. I got an idea for you. Because I was actually thinking about that the other day. After we talked. Okay, so we got that going. And so, I appreciate y'all being here. Um, thank you for the support and being here tonight. I really, really do appreciate it. I'm um, uh, sort of learning, so bear with me. I hope you guys don't mind this little bit of a learning process. It's good to see that uh, even artists, we learn as we go. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Thank you for the host, TH. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely, Whisper. I got some ideas for you. TH, uh, thank you for the social info water bowl. Yeah, and if anyone's curious, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I upload um, tutorials to YouTube where I show people how to make this kind of stuff. I upload video editing tutorials, things like that. Um, I upload my art daily, pretty much, to Instagram and Twitter. So if you guys like what you see, feel free to follow me there. And if, as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, let's go here. We're gonna go here. Now, what were you saying about keeping the stars not animated? What are you thinking on that? You think that would look cool if the stars stayed still and in, in in everything revolved around it? Is that what you're saying? Because I, I forget who exactly it was. I think it, TH was saying. Twitter? You're not a Twitter fan, Grim? So here's the thing with Twitter. I'll be honest with you. I've gotten more work from Twitter than I have Instagram, believe it or not. Um, In terms of like people reaching out to me for commissions and stuff. I've gotten more through Twitter than Instagram, so it works for me. There's things I don't like about it, but it works. You never gotten into it? It what, what I use it for, Grim, is literally posting art. Just posting art. That's all I do. Every Everything you see me post on Twitter, Instagram, it's just going to be art. That, that's solely what it is. I agree with the stars being still. They wouldn't move much at all, and it gives the illusion of extreme distance. Okay, so then if you're going to use that theory then, then the suns would be, the suns would also be stagnant, correct? Because if we're going to play on the theory that the, the stars aren't moving, right? They would move more than the stars. All right, well, let's, let's try it. We'll go with the stars. Let's grab the star scenes and here's what we'll do. The sun would move more than the stars, but only a little bit barely. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's try this. Well, hello, Frodo. What are you doing, sir? Huh? What are you doing? Kitty attack. Jeez. He is a jerk, Galen. The jerk of all jerk cats. He, he has... This, this cat is strange, y'all. He likes Q-tips. And he he makes it a habit. He'll dig Q-tips out of the trash can, out of, a, out of a fresh box, and he will drag them all over the house. 
We'll get up in the morning and it will be like 15 Q-tips. But this is where it gets even crazier. He pretends like he's killing them, like he's done a good job. So he lines them up and down the hall and then he howls at them at 3 in the morning. As loud as he can. He meows as loud as humanly possible to let us know that he's killed the Q-tip. So then I have to get up at 3 in the morning, swat him on the butt, he runs away, and I have to pick up Q-tip. And he just howls about it. And I'm like... <laughs> He's a jerk. I keep telling my daughter, he keeps wasting all that money on Q-tip. Please record it. I'll, I'll try to get it. Frodo, you hear that? Me and you. We're going to get a recording. Sound good? Hmm? You don't want me touching your tail? My chair, dude. You don't like it. You don't like it. You can scat. No? All right. Yeah. I'll stick to my dog. I got my dogs too now. But I love my cat. All right. Let's do this. Now, why does it say... Oh, I know. Yeah, we got big old boys. It's funny, I have people that come in here. So I'm in a full-size desk and a full-size chair, right? And I'm not a little person. But when Odin comes in here, his head's like right here. And people are always like, they look at the camera funny because they're like, what the heck? Because, you know, Odin standing, his head like right here next to mine. And I think people are always kind of confused because they don't understand. Like, either I'm a very short person or I'm sitting on the floor or something. But it's like, no, he's just super big. Uh, Great Dane. Um, he, Odin is about, Odin's about 180-ish pounds. And then Bo, his brother, is about 160, 165 ish pounds. So, roughly, a little over 300 pounds worth of dogs. Roughly. Now, I don't understand why this is doing this. We could. We absolutely could make them twinkle. What I'm trying to figure out right now, this is why I'm confused. So you see this option right here. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. You see where it says immune to camera? It will not let me check it for the stars. And I'm not sure why, because on the logo, we were able to turn on immune to camera. Well, I'm not sure why the... Why in the world is the immune to camera not available for the stars? Is it the way it's layered, maybe? Let's take a star layer up out of that group and let's see if we can turn it on then. See, now you can turn on immune to camera. So does that mean that... Okay, let's test that theory. Let's, let's drag it to the behind that layer. Immune to camera. Okay. Too small? I don't know. Let's test it. Immune to camera. Okay, so something about it being wrapped. All right, hold on. Hold on. I got it. I got it. Where there's a will, there's a way. Immune to camera. There we go. So what we're going to do is this. Okay. Yeah, I got it. We're going to turn... We're going to take the background and the stars, and we're going to take them out of the grouping, move them all the way to the rear... Right? And then what we'll do is... Yep, I got it. Then we can turn on immune to camera. So there's something about that wrapper on that group that's not, in let, not letting me do immune to camera. What it is, I don't know. But we should be able to do immune to camera here. Okay, yep. So now what we got to do is we got to bring some of these down. Because when we brought them out of there, it's sort of move them into a strange position. You see that? So we'll kind of move these more into position like this. 
and then we'll go with the stars one and we'll kind of put it into place here we'll go a little bit smaller it's sort of like this you see so now all that is in place so now if we treat it like we just did let's watch this left side over here as we move this <laughs> hey Mark are you using um, Mixer Elixir as well, Mark? Of course, okay. So you guys see that right there, right? Now the stars aren't moving, but the suns are. So what did we say about the suns? That the suns should be not as much movement? Is that correct? We did agree on that, right? Barely move, okay. So if we want to do that, I'm going to show you guys what we're doing here. Here's our Z-Depth, so you can see how this is layered. So you can see exactly what's going on here. Here's everything layered in, right? The only way to realistically do that... That must be my wife and daughter, Odin, howling. Or he's whining. Must be because Darcy's home. He likes to run around the house with Darcy. But you might see Darcy in a minute. Um, let's go with here. Move more than the stars. I love they used your creation and gave you a shout out. Yeah. So they're actually, they're actually, um, looking for people, Merc, on, um, Twitter to make more. So if you have any ideas for some that you don't, they don't have to be animated. So if you want to, if you want to reach out to them, feel free and say, Hey, you're creative. You'd love to make one. And, you know, submit them something. And, and I'm sure if they like what you got, they'll they'll probably use it and give you a shout out as well, dude. Because I've got a couple more ideas. So I've got a couple more I'm actually in the works of making right now. I'm just not 100% done with them yet. But you might want to reach out, buddy. Because I'm actually going to make a command here in the channel. That way people, or if they're curious what it is, it can, we can give them a link back to it. And sort of, you know, help the growth of it out. Since it's such a great tool, I'd like to help people find it. So I, I moved that out. How am I going to do this? I feel like I would almost have to make them immune. The camera movement. Yeah, because I'm going to make a command. Uh, Water bottle dropped me a message. And what I'm going to do is make it. And I'm going to do just a regular command that anybody could run. And probably call it like M Elixir or Mixer. I'll, I'll do something, uh, an easy command. Like maybe ME or something. And that way water bottle can run it and stuff. So that way when people are like, oh, what is Mixer Elixir? Well, there you go. And we'll put a, a quick, like, this is what it is. Here's where you get it. I mean, why not, you know? I think it's a really cool tool and I think it can help people. And especially with so many people coming into Mixer right now, right? Like, it can't hurt to help educate people on those kinds of things. So, for sure. All right, so we've got that. I'm trying to think on the suns, guys. Right, there you go. Yep. So it's made by the same crew that does Firebot, I believe. Right, Water Bottle? Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. How am I going to do these suns? Because I want them to be not as affected. Keep hearing the cats and the dog. They must be here. Make a water bottle emote. You know, we absolutely could. You know, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. What do you think, water bottle? Water bottle. Whoop, there it is. Hey, Darcy, come here. Hmm? How'd it go? Um, for 20th of Coco, they did it in inside because of the rain. Well, rain or Hold one side, folks.
Right on. Hey, Buffet Lobster, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Thank you for the support over there. They're going to do Coco. Cool. Hey, Darcy, come see me when you're done. Water bottle's here. I didn't know if you want to say hi to her. Okay. We don't behave Look. that way, but thanks for coming. Hi, water bottle! <laughs> oh, she wants me to hit the water bottle button. Hold on, water bottle. There it goes. She said hi! Oh, Dryden's sleep. You got it. Sorry about that. You gotta behave around here, buddy. There's Deja Vu said hi. Or by Galen said hi. Everybody said hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you tell them what you did? Mama, Mama don't like the camera so much. Why don't you lean in and say hi to everybody? It's over here. It's hidden. They it's right there. So Darcy has to lean in if she says hi. They went and watched. See? Oh, Lord. Mama don't like the camera so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bald, Buffet. I have hair. We don't behave <laughs> that way, but thanks for coming. Get him water bottle. We better put it in the car. Oh, you knocked Mayor Pete's off. You knocked Mayor Pete's off. You done stuff Yep. All right, guys. Go have fun. Yep, that's the missus. Alright, go have fun, okay? Girl, you better get on. When's the next mini me stream? It'll be soon, Water Bottle. We'll do it soon. Oh, do we got people in here misbehaving? Did the uh did the thing still say the same? Did it say we do not behave that way around? Thanks for coming by. Did it trigger Darcy's thing? I had my earphones things off. Yeah? <laughs> Good. Well, that'll teach them. You know, that's the thing. Come in here and have a little common decency and people will be nice to you, you know? Yeah, we got it working. We're, we're playing around with something else, Rob. We are playing around with... The, the suggestion came to add, like, some motion blur to the speeder. So we've done that to make the speeder move through the scene. So we've done that. So the, the speeder's now moving through the scene with motion blur. And then people were saying, why don't we keep the stars stagnant, like not moving, because it would make sense, and I agree it would, and it'll actually increase the movement. So we've, we've got the stars sitting still, and now what we're doing is we're working on making the sun sort of sit still as well. That way everything sort of moves in front of it, right, and sort of pivots on that, that point, like a center line. Yeah, just kind of playing around. We're just, you know... Learning different things. Right, it does. And it was something I didn't think about. And they were like, hey, wouldn't the stars stay still? And it's like, you're right. So. And then what we have here is if you look at this, you don't see it until we do the render frame, Rob. But you see the motion blur on the speeder? We've got that motion blur effect that's happening on the speeder in the trail as it cuts through the scene. And then it'll sort of taper off as it goes through. And then we'll add that camera motion because I've got the camera motion disabled for a minute while we work on it. And then we'll we'll turn that camera motion back on and then should be enough to call it a day, I think, with this. Good fun. Something different. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's you know, so we've been doing a lot of stuff. I'll open up a couple other things because we've got some new faces in here. So I've been doing stuff like this, and I I know I go back to these a lot, but I like to kind of show people what we can do here. But you see, like this right here. This is sort of what I'm doing is these little animations, little at a time, you know, just kind of learning like different elements, how to like animate different styles with bones and things like that, because it's one of those things I'm self-taught on all this. So you kind of have to just learn little by little and sort of break it down into little elements. So what I do is every time I learn something new or every time I do something new, I really try to pay attention to what I'm doing and I just sort of, um, try to like catalog it and so I can use it on the next one. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Lexi, how are you? You a vector artist as well? Hi there. Thanks for stopping in. We're working on a little bit of animation tonight. Yeah, there's social info, guys. If you guys want to follow me on any of that stuff, feel free. No pressure. Thanks for being here. I really do appreciate that support. You're checking out creative stuff on Mixer. Well, welcome to Mixer. My name's Jeremiah. Um, as you can see, we have a creative stream here. We do... Um, vector art we do animation things like that um but yeah thanks for stopping in thank you all right let's 
that. Let's finish this up. <laughs> hey, Deja. Good to see you, Deja. Your community is strong on Mixer. Er <laughs> Come on, Rob. Look, we'll give you the cat. I was, man, I sat there and I made that little cat, right? I, I made that little cat for Catbot to trigger, and then Catbot apparently can't be triggered by Mix It Up. Can that cat be triggered by, uh, can it be triggered by, um, Firebot? Water bottle, do you know? <laughs> Play cat, bog with that. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Sorry, right, guys, we're just having fun sort of discussing. Um, Lexi, if you have any questions for me on Mixer or anything Mixer related, feel free. Um, or if you have any questions about the art in general, feel free. Um, we, I do sort of an informative teaching stream as well, so if I can help you in any way, let me know. I would think so, because Firebot does actually come into the channel as a visible user. So what I was trying to do, this little kitty right here, I wanted when somebody screwed up or when Catbot removed stuff, I wanted to, I wanted Mix It Up to trigger that. So I jumped on Mix It Up Discord and they said that you can't, it, uh, Mix It Up will not input Catbot removals in, it won't, it won't pick them up. So there's no way to make Mix It Up play that scene when Catbot triggers. I just thought it'd be something fun to do, but you can't, it won't work if I ask. All right, let's let's finish it. Since it auto deletes, that might be why water bottle. So that's in Catbot. What's in Catbot? That cat, Merc. No, I made him the other day. I was eating lunch, and I thought it'd be funny to take that cat, that little meme cat that's everywhere, the one sitting at the table with the salad. I thought it'd be fun to take his little head and put it on a robot. Turn him into a little cat bot. <laughs> just because I like the way he looks. He has that little that little face. I just think he's funny. I thought it'd be fun to turn him into something, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I knew Water Bottle would love it. I thought he was hilarious. Like, I made him and I was just sitting at work laughing. And I'm sure people were like, what is this guy laughing at? But I didn't care because I was just looking at him the whole time laughing. And I was thinking it'd be funny if I could get Catbot to trigger it. But alas, we cannot. Really? Uh, I use Affinity, Lexi, right here. So everything you see over here on the side, Lexi, is all made in Affinity. Uh, I'd say probably 95% of that is all in Affinity Designer. You just bought Affinity. Well, there you go. Um, I've been using Affinity for about a year and a half, two years now. Uh, I don't use Adobe at all anymore. Um, and uh, I love it. Like, I love it. Yep. Yeah. But I haven't switched military yet. Right on. Yeah, I I um I just kind of got tired as a freelance artist. I got a little tired of the business model, and I could kind of see the writing on the wall with Adobe where things were going with the increase in price, increase in price, increase in price, right? And so for me, it was sort of a decision as a freelance artist. I was like, you know what? I need to find something that's going to work for me that's not going to break the bank. And when I saw Affinity, I bought it real early on. And I've loved it. I've, I've been using it ever since. I use it for all my freelance projects. I have no problem outputting PSDs and anything like that. Animation wise, I use Moho. So this is what you're gonna see. This software we're using right here is how I do things like this. So that face you see right there is, um, that face you see right there is actually a flat 2D face. And, um, but it's animated to look 3D using bones and rigging. So I, use, I do all my animations like, you know, water bottle here and everything. I do all that in Moho and I do all of the uh, the art in Affinity and then I import it into Moho and then I animate it. So, yeah. I turned out really good. Thank you, Dragon. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, look at this, Dragon. 
you're gonna like this. You're you're an older guy like myself. We're, we're turning it into a hologram. This is something really cool. You see this, Lexi? With this software, you can do Z depth. So you can create that three dimensional depth that allows you to almost give something a holographic look. So watch this. I'll show you what this means over here. Um, so if we move this around, watch over here on the left hand side. You see how you can sort of play with the See how that starts to look almost like a hologram? That's what we're doing. We're animating it right now. And so I'm sort of playing with it. Um, and I'm still kind of learning this style because it's something that I want to play with. Yeah. Right, I use liquify and puppet tool a lot in After Effects to fake 3D movement. Right. So yeah, and, and you could you could sort of do it with that, Lexi, but this here is more like so I'll give you another example. Um let's look at this little guy here. And for anyone who's new to the stream, this is very, very common here. We we look about things, we look at things, we discuss things. So I hope you guys are cool with that. Uh, you see the bones and everything right here, Lexi. You see the controllers and the bones, right? These are the way that you, that little guy you see there is a, and thank you for the follow, Lexi. I appreciate it. He is a flat 2D character made in Affinity, but through squatch and stretch and bone movement, it almost makes him look like he's alive. You know, he is literally just what one two three shapes yes i made that controller right there so that controller is taking input from the bones you see up top you make the controller you bind the controller bone to the rig bones so if we look at the bones there's a squat stretch eye movement body movement and a up down movement right and then those bones are tied into the controller so you make the bones you rig the character you make the controller and then you bind the controller to the bones and then that's how you animate Be cool to make it interactive for the stream. So, how would you even do that? I'm not sure, Merc. That'd be interesting, that's for sure. I parent a lot of things. Yeah, we do animations on stream. So, I mean, if I can ever, um, you know, answer a question for you or something, I'd be glad to try. Where your lovey is? Um, no, well, she's not in my lap. I don't know. When did you last have your lovey? Yesterday. Yesterday. Um, Hold on one second, guys. We we've got the case of the missing lovey. One second. Look in here. Did you look in your baby cart? I don't know where lovey is, babe. I apologize. Oh, there's lovey. All right, give me a kiss. Lovey. Give me a kiss. You can go to bed with little lovey, okay? I love you. Give me a kiss, lovey. Good night, baby. I gotta go for tonight. Have a great night, guys. All right, Galen, take care, buddy. <clears throat> you probably could if you can get over the video. To, yeah, maybe. It might be. Galen, take care, buddy. Good, good to see you, man. Thanks for stopping in, guys. Again, for anyone who is into creative streams, Galen is another creative streamer here on the platform. Definitely worth your follow. Go check him out. You gonna stay there, Odie? You gonna try to stay there? Man, everybody's coming to see me tonight. Yeah, Dragon Flare. Sorry, almost forgot. Um, Dragon Flare is another streamer here. Uh, definitely worth your follow, guys. Super, oh, super, super awesome guy. Um, he's very supportive of what I do here. Um, highly recommend following him. He's a really, really nice guy. You'll like him. But I'm using on the platform. It must not be named. Oh, dude, no. Hey, Lexi, don't worry about it here. Um, so in my stream, there, there's no real... We were just talking about this earlier. Like, I have no issues with other platforms. So... Like, I have friends who stream on Twitch. I have friends that I watch on Twitch, right? I have friends that stream on DLive. I have friends that stream on YouTube. So, you know, m here's my thing. I always look at it like it's your content, right? And you're the one putting in the work. So you stream, w right, right, yeah. Some people are like that, not me. Like, if you know, once I get to know people, um, yeah, I'm restreaming to DLive and YouTube right now, Lexi, as a matter of fact. So I'm streaming to three services right now. So, yeah, once you, you know, I'm all for that. Right, exactly. Yeah, and my thing is like, you know, I look at it like we all put in this work, right? We all put in this effort. So you should stream where you're comfortable. And if you're comfortable wherever you're comfortable, that's you. You do you. You know, I'm not going to judge. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, thank you so much for coming in. And um, if we can, um, um, if you can, you know, if you have any questions about Mixer, let us know. A little water bottle emote. 
all of them. <laughs> mixer elixir, yep. You use mixer elixir, don't you, uh, dragon? It's a stronger art community, but it isn't accessible as mixer. <clears throat> you do. I added one today. Um, it, it's a spinoff of this little dude. Yeah, TH, I mean, you know, and, and I have a lot of friends that stream art on Twitch. You know what I mean? So, like, I absolutely, I understand, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You mostly stream art, okay. Yeah, it's a Chrome extension that allows you to upload your own custom emotes. It, right. And Firefox now, right. There you go. This is turning into a, I'm not a very, I'm not doing a very good art stream. I apologize to everyone out there. <laughs> I apologize. We're just hanging out and talking, but thank you so much for being awesome, folks. No, no, Lexi, you are fine. We, we want people to ask questions. Like, if we can help you, by all means, like, don't, don't, don't be afraid of that. That's how we all learn, you know? all the best teacher for art. <laughs> well, thank you, Deja. I appreciate it, buddy. Lexi Win. Okay, I'll drop you a follow over there. Check you out. We've had, we've actually had Lexi. We've had several artists come in and um, over the last couple weeks and I've dropped them follows over there and they've followed me and, you know, because again, I mean, at the end of the day, right, we're all streamers, you know, and, 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 um, hey, you know, The artist's ability to develop and or strengthen. Absolutely, TH, yeah. Has your name always been TH or is it something else? As I feel like it should be something else I know. I didn't know there was art on Mixer. Right, so the thing is, if you look at the... It was Pumpkin. Okay, I know that name. There you go. I know Pumpkin. Okay, well, hello, Pumpkin. <laughs> Mine's increased. Absolutely, Mark. Mine's increased a, a, a bunch. Um, yeah, there is art on Mixer, so um, when you look on Mixer, though, on the front page, there's a lot of art that I do know that hopefully there's some changes coming to that in the future, but there are definitely some communities here. There, there's music communities, there are, are art communities, there are a lot of different communities. It's not just, um, not just video games, so, you know, a lot like Twitch, um, so, yes, I know that name, okay. I didn't know you changed your name, my apologies, because I was like... Why do I feel like I should know this person? Yeah, seven and seven, straw, rhino lion. I mean, there's uh, bad Merc makes art. There's a whole lot of artists here to follow. There's a whole lot of music people to follow. I mean, there's there's all kinds of people on this platform. On Mixer Stats, music's not right. I've heard, Deja, there's a lot of music people moving over here. Or starting over here, I should say. Like, recently, it seems like that's absolutely exploded. Is that right? That's what everyone's saying, anyways. Awesome. Are we doing better because Twitch needs to help? Yeah, it absolutely does, Lexi. Uh, competition breeds innovation. Competition breeds uh, stability. Competition is needed on all platforms. I've been streaming my artwork more often. Oh, very cool. Okay. I will be sure to drop in and check you out then. Here's because the partner's hosting. Yeah, that, that, um, the, what is that? What is that one big music channel? Um, I personally haven't really watched it. Mo Mo Monster Cat, I think. Chilled Cat, yeah, those. Monster Cat, Chilled Cat. Yeah. Okay. Blank Cat. <laughs> that Blank Cat, dude, is hilarious. Alright. 
Alright, we gotta bring these sons out. Alright, Jeremiah, get to work. Get to work. Get to work. Odin, what are you doing, dude? Can y'all believe that Frodo... Remember I told you he's a jerk, right? Frodo? A five-pound cat is terrorizing a 180-pound dog. Tell me how that makes sense. Frodo, chill, bro. He, he, he is... He's something else. I'll tell you right now. Oh, he, he's terrified of him. Well, not terrified. The thing with Frodo is, Frodo is, like, way overly playful. He thinks everyone and everything is a toy. He's one of those cats where, like, if it if it moves at all, it's a toy. It's period. And um, so he, he gets really excited about the smallest little things. And he just does the craziest thing. I mean, he is such a goofy little cat. Most often a non-digital artist, but man, I'm so impressed. Well, thank you. I appreciate that compliment. I really do. Um, you know, the thing I, I, I'm constantly trying to develop new styles and what I want things to look like, you know, and how I want them to look. And so it's sort of the, you know, it's, I push myself hard sometimes, but I enjoy it. Like right now I'm working on a couple kids books and I'm working on a webcomic as well, trying to kind of branch into those styles a little bit. And just kind of playing with, like, how would I do it? What would it look like? You know, trying to establish. It is. It is. Because it sort of goes all over the place, you know? And especially with vector art, you know? Oh, I do all the time, Lexi. Because sometimes I'll, I'll make something and I'll look at it and I'll be like, man, I don't even know if I want to share that with anybody. You know what I mean? I'm going to check him out, Deja. I didn't know he was streaming art. So I'll stop in there and check him out for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, good to know. Good to know. But where do these fit on that Z axis? They're in the same spot. So if I move them over here, they're going to move just like they... If I make them camera movement, they're going to move. Yeah, they're going to move. So it's either, it's either no movement or very little movement. Maybe we should move the sun by hand? What do you guys think? Maybe I, that's what we'll do. We'll set them immune to camera movement. And we'll make them slightly smaller. And then we'll we'll mess with the that. So Moho. And does it have a lot of stuff? After Effects does. So Moho is a funny animal, right? There's a entry level, what they call debut version, which is like, I want to say it's $49.99. And then there's the pro version, which is like 400. So it's either 50 or 400. Um, think about it like, as far as what does it do to, as far as what does it do for like, <laughs> compared to After Effects, it's gonna be, you're gonna be able to do some things you would do in After Effects, yes. But it's more for bone rigging and that kind of animation, right? It's not really, meant to be a compositing software like After Effects. That's not 100% what it is. So I feel like, like I'll give you an example. I started making this the other day. Where is it? This little camera, right? Because I was testing what would motion art look like in this. So as you can see, this camera sort of drops into the scene and, and I'm testing with like what motion graphics would look like essentially. And, um, it is possible. It's just a different way of thinking. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you can definitely do animated emotes in here and stuff like that. Um, it, it's going to be a little bit different train of thought. It's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. You know what I mean? Um, so, is it, a, is it an After Effects replacement? No. No. I wouldn't go that far. Um, could it be? If you use it the right way, I think it could be. 
streaming is super boring. I appreciate peaks. Right. You know, and the thing with that is, is, um, like, I love streaming art. It, it's the reason I really got into streaming. But the thing is, is there's times where it can be really difficult to figure out what you're going to draw and what it is you're going to do on camera, right? Because, of course, you want it to be entertaining. But there's times it can be a real struggle because sometimes I envy, like, people that play games all the time because you're just kind of playing a game making conversation. And I'm not saying it's easy. Not what I'm saying. But, like, with art, you're constantly worried about, am I, is it good enough? Is it... Is it, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it can be really stressful to make sure that you're, you're putting up good content. And that can be sort of a, a really challenging bag. You know what I mean? You think very little movement minus the ship. And so it's one of those things, like, it takes a while to get used to streaming art. It really does. Okay. There we go. We'll play with this. We'll play with this. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I know what you mean. It can be very stressful sometimes, but it can be very rewarding too, because it's really cool when you inspire someone and you see someone, you know, it, it's cool when you see somebody get inspired by what you do and go and make something. I think that's such a cool feeling and it's such a unique feeling. Yeah. Dreaming commissions, you will rarely see me do that, Lexi. Um, because... Those are kinds of conversations I really don't like to have on stream. You know what I mean? I try not to stream commissions because it can be really, it can be really rewarding, but depending on who you're doing the commission for, it can be really difficult. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I usually stream just where I'm learning or just something fun. But that, that's my own personal two cents on it. It's not saying that right or wrong. Because, you know, it can be hard to get the right kind of feedback, you know? Right. Yeah. Alright, um... So I wonder if we should make the stars twinkle. I think uh, that was a suggestion earlier, and I think we could do some fun stuff with that. But let's try that. What we'll do is this. We will go with the stars at... Let's go... We're going to mess with opacity, so we're going to open this up. I'm not quite sure how to do that, but we're going to try it. Let's see if we can't make a twinkle effect. And then what we'll do is we'll make that twinkle effect will make that twinkle effect repeat. Let, let's play with that. So let's go, let's start here. And we will go with the opacity is at 100. Let's go out to 12 and we'll set the opacity down to like maybe... Oh, Frodo's terrifying the dog again. Okay. back here we'll go back to 100 and then we'll jump out and we could copy frame but I think we'll just do this manually because I, I kind of like what that's gonna do and then back to 100 good and then here's what we'll do we'll do a completely different routine on stars one so we'll come out to like maybe here we'll go down to 70 We'll jump out to here and we'll go back to 100. And I have no idea what this is going to look like. I'm literally putting random, just random intervals. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of gauge it together. We'll do a rendered scene and then we'll play with it. We'll render it out real fast. Oh, not 200%. How can you go to 200% opacity? Come on, software. That's impossible. Let's go here, we'll go to this one, 
We'll go to the stars at 50%. Oh, we should have kept that open. And then we'll go here. We'll go down to like maybe 30%. And then we'll go all the way back to the end and we'll go back to 100. 200% again. Okay, so let, let's render this quickly just to kind of get a feel for what it's going to look like with the... Hey, John, what's up, buddy? How are you? Go here and let's render it real fast just to get an idea of what the stars are doing. Take a second. Get a drink. Let's see how this turns up. And if anyone has any questions, feel free. Thank you for being here, guys. I appreciate the support and the follows and the host and everything. I wonder with the motion blur it's going to take a little bit longer to render but not too long jump over here real quick we'll take this out of here we're not going to do anything with that tonight let's open let's see hey Bobo what are you doing buddy where is the graphics Kind of play with this for a minute while that's rendering. <clears throat> uh, copy this over. Yeah, we'll play around with some random shapes and stuff. We'll make some random little characters because I want to play around with this style a little bit more as well um, and then I don't know if I want to do how I want to do like the hand styles and everything but I've got a couple ideas here play with that in a second we'll let this render and then I don't know how much more how long it's like a pest dispenser <laughs> in a way right I'm sort of playing around with some different styles, like outline styles and stuff, like trying to play around with just different variations, you know? Thanks for that, hose, buddy. How are you? Let's let that render. Almost done. And we'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those, like I'm, I'm constantly trying out new things, new styles, new ideas, just you know, trying to see what I can do with it. Lay down, buddy. That cat's not going to bother you. Alright, there's that little bit. Almost noon? Yeah, I'm terrible. I can't sleep. I can never sleep that late, ever. It just doesn't work for me. Okay, so we'll need to taper that off at the tip. We'll need to play with some of that. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, cool. Well, let me check here real quick. I want to see is around because I'm gonna need to get going soonish. Getting late for me. Let's see who is around. Who is around? I don't even need to. 
Yeah, if I didn't have things to do in the morning, I would stream a little later tonight, but I've already been live for about three and a half hours, so I definitely need to get some sleep. Um, I think what we'll do is, who's on? Gless is on. Let's go drop, let's go drop a buddy of mine is streaming some Minecraft. Um, let's go drop it on him. I think we'll drop a host on him. That sounds fun. That way I can get some sleep. So anyways, folks, thank you so, so much for being here. Um, I know we didn't even get a whole lot done today, but I really do appreciate you being here, hanging out. I appreciate the follows, the hosts, the questions, everything as always. You guys are awesome. This is why we do this. So thank you. Um, I'm going to get some rest. Uh, I will be streaming again Sunday night. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. So thank you guys so much. Um, <laughs> Blink Cat. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Grim. Good to see you again. And for everybody else who was here, thank you so much. Have a fantastic night. I will see you guys later. Bye. We're going to drop a host on glass. Take care.